Lift your hands and bless him. Hallelujah. Father, we give you all the praise. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your ability and your willingness to change us. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. Lift your hands and sing it as a prayer from the depth of your heart. Affect my life, breathe on me. the voices sing it to him affect my life breathe on me we look to you for life affect my life breathe on me I look to one more time just the voices affect my life breathe on me Lord, I look to you for that. Affect my life, breathe on me. As I look to you for that. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place, 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 sing it to him. Jena na na de na maria, Jena na na mo na na maria. Take your place, take your place. Oh, 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 Sanada, It's a chant in the spirit. It's a call for the heavens to revive and transform and heal and bless. from the time we received this song this song has been a chord for me in the spirit there's something about 
receiving specific songs for seasons there are many songs by the grace of God that we have received in this place but there's just a strange anointing upon this song it's, it's like a call and response it compels something within you to respond to the heavens I've tried and tried to stop singing this song but it will not leave it's a chant in the spirit it does something to my spirit it does something to my spirit Help us worship him. time all the instruments our voices and our hands lifted yeah. Help me worship him. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy. Just the voices. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy. Worthy is the Lamb. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. at your table I have come to feast at your table 
We have come to draw strength tonight. Strength for the journey ahead. of the living God we ask you tonight invade our lives do something remarkable in our lives tonight turn our lives around turn our lives around turn our lives around turn our lives around hallelujah hallelujah God bless you please be seated good evening everyone your life will never be the same in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. I welcome everyone once again. We have a lot to do tonight. And we're trusting God to be able to go so far. Every moment in his presence. Let me tell you one of the reasons why the presence of God should be greatly desired. In his presence, there is not only liberty. In his presence, there is wisdom. In his presence, there is understanding. It's in his presence he reveals to us the mystery behind the happenings in our lives. And he shows us the system. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Apologize for that. Praise the Lord. Tonight's teaching is going to bless us in no small way. I like our hearts to really, really be opened. The Lord wants to speak to us by the power of His Spirit. Hallelujah. The Lord put something in my spirit that I'd like us to write down that I think will be very important and it will set the pace tonight. Um, there are so many people outside. As we always say, you are part of us. And um, I know that the Lord brought you to bless you. And do not let distance distract you. I see people standing with something to write. I want you to know we really appreciate the sacrifice. And um, this that you are doing will speak in your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. You see, when God gave man the mandate to dominate the word dominion means sovereign control sovereign control and every religion every movement promises one thing dominion the fear of man has been his inability to completely control certain situations and circumstances please i want you to listen the things we cannot control are the things that bring fear to our lives so people fear poverty for instance because of um, an effect it seems to be able to bring to our lives and we cannot do anything about it we fear death we fear guns because we think they can do something to us we fear failure because it does something to us. Every time man is unable to control a process, it brings fear, it brings a sense of subjugation. So every movement that has come through history and civilization promises to lead man to a pathway where we will be able to access dominion. But we know that there is no true dominion and authority outside of Christ. Genesis 1 26 the Bible says and Elohim said let us make man in our own image it says let them have sovereign control dominion hallelujah 
what what is happening to you here every time is the process that will bring you into true dominion i told us again and again that dominion is not a wish dominion is not an impartation dominion is a reaction something happens to your life that leads to an end called dominion hallelujah write this down something i do not know is responsible for the limitation in my life write this down something i do not know is responsible for the limitation in my life something i do not know is responsible i said for you to write it this way so that every time you are reading it you can personalize it and it can create the effect that will birth change something i do not know is responsible for the limitation in my life the second thing i want you to write is this something i am aware of but have not believed is also responsible for my limitation something i am aware of but have not believed is responsible for my limitation there is something i am aware of there is an information a revelation i am aware of i'm not ignorant of it i'm aware of it but my refusal to believe it has brought limitation to my life number three something i have believed but have not consistently acted upon is also responsible for my limitation something i have believed but have not consistently acted upon underline consistently acted upon something i have believed but have not consistently acted upon is also responsible for my limitation These three factors have limited us in no small way. Something we do not know is responsible for the limitations in our lives. Two, something we know and information we have come across but we have not chosen to believe is also responsible for the limitations in our lives. Number three, something we have believed but have not consistently it may be that you have acted upon it but you have not consistently acted upon see the danger is that any of these three categories will produce the same result see how frustrating it is are we together now so we have three people here one who is completely ignorant and he's not even aware he's ignorant his miracle starts when he's aware that he's ignorant. Not even when the solution comes. The awareness that you need help is already deliverance in itself. Let me tell you how Satan destroys people. He keeps you in ignorance. Are we together now? And he closes every door that can even make you aware you are ignorant. That's the first person. His end is predictable. Number two is the one who is he's not ignorant he's had access to the information that can change him or her but the person has refused to believe you see i found out that it's not what you hear that changes you it's what you choose to believe and live by so this person here has all the information has read all the books has gone for all the seminars comes for koinonia every week and you will think that he would produce certain kinds of results right the third person not only is not ignorant not only has believed but has refused to consistently act now the terrible thing is you would think the first two should be better than the first person but their results will all come out the same hallelujah that's why the interesting thing about god is when you start working with him you have to go all the way to see your progress 
you can't take two steps with god and expect you will see any remarkable progress you've had you you've got to go all the way and then you will see that there is progress tonight i want to teach on strategic kingdom influence strategic kingdom influence this teaching will bless you it will change your life strategic kingdom influence i want to teach us a major tool for kingdom advancement in the 21st century strategic kingdom influence one of the please look up especially those of us who are pastors ministries fellowships and groups i think i was uh, i don't know if it was the school of ministry students we were having a discussion yesterday and i was telling them a true shepherd listen please a true shepherd must build people intentionally there's no lecturer who comes to the lecture hall guessing what he thinks the students should become are we together every like the students don't even know what they should become many times a few may know but the lecturer is only a lecturer because he is privy to an information he knows what the students should become if they diligently stay under his tutelage when jesus came he knew what he wanted the disciples to become he wanted them to become apostles envoys advocates of his ideology and he knew exactly what to do it's a terrible thing when a pastor is confused about the path of spiritual progress of the members meaning that he doesn't really know what builds the people he's hoping and sadly i say this and i'm challenging especially those of us who are men of god you don't sit down and just guess what to teach people on saturday night or sunday early in the morning you just think and say what have i not talked about character people are misbehaving in my church you now run a hammer on character and then you find out that uh, people need to learn on miracles and then you go and teach on miracles your growth will not be constructive every pastor ought to develop people in five areas number one their spiritual lives these are just um, additions that I think I should communicate before we go into our discussion tonight. Number one, our spiritual life. Any pastor, any leader that cannot guide the people God has committed to him to really know God, to come to a point where they can hear the voice of God, to come to a point where they conform to the image of the Christ, to come to a point where the average member is passionate about the things of the kingdom no matter what else you teach people if you don't bring them to a point of addiction and love and passion for god then they are not growing hallelujah yes where they seek his face where they love him genuinely not where they use him where they love him so that's the first area and that involves them being born again not just being healed they have to be saved pastors make sure the congregation of the people you are leading among other things and before other things their salvation is secured i don't care what else happened in that church if the people are not saved they are not growing praise the lord they must be saved and established in righteousness where your members become people of conviction let me tell you something i have seen congregations where the level of revelation that comes from the preacher to them is very low but i respect those congregations because the little the man of god knows he has brought his members to a point of conviction i'm irritated by an assembly that does not have values spiritual convictions it's better to be wrong about something so that even when you change you know what you left not that you are there today you think divine healing is scriptural tomorrow you are not sure today you think prosperity is good and then your man of god comes and him too he's not sure there are times you see pastors oscillating you go for a conference and hear something and you come back ship it to your congregation and teach them only for you to grow two weeks later and find out that you wouldn't have brought that revelation that way and then the members are hearing a lot of things but they are not growing 
Hallelujah. Number two, every true shepherd must be able to build people's finances. I'm absolutely convinced that a man of God who does not pay attention to the financial well-being of his congregation is not only a wicked man of God. He's not only a wicked man of God, but he's a dangerous man of God. You know why? Because the Bible says where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. If you want to get the heart of a congregation focused towards God, there are certain things in their lives that can really become distractions. There is no how you want a man to serve God, lie down, you want him to give you three or four or five hours of his life, whereas he knows that his rent is due. Are we together now? And then it is also wicked honestly this is my proposition i think it is really wicked for a man of god to stand up and then say oh how many people are going to give one one million naira?" i was telling the school of ministry students and then you have people come out and then they are they are they are offering now i don't care whether the church is using their offering or not these people give offerings every week even if it's five naira it left them is that true they pay their time And then the minister of the gospel in turn is not empowering them. And so they are broke, they are failures in their offices. They are at the lower levels. They can't do nothing. They don't have options. They've not grown to a point where they can be able to say, look, I, can, I want to go to church. Somebody cover for me. No influence. Sometimes... We, we teach what we call a replacement theology where we can use one dimension of the kingdom to replace the need for another. It doesn't exist. It's error. And a man of God can be so bold in error and mislead people. Many pastors who don't pay attention to the finances of their members are doing well themselves. They are doing well because they are offering spiritual value and the members sow into their lives. The members maybe pay their rent some of the pastors collect salary so i can teach you all kinds of things and immediately after the service my dinner is secured i'm going to go and eat but will you eat a good shepherd does not march on his sheep he lays down his life for his sheep you see this is why many congregations are um, is a beehive of frustrated people there are issues people have that will not allow them to grow number three every true shepherd should teach people and guide them along the area of excellence in leadership how to excel career wise how to excel family wise Every church, every congregation is a unit of family. You cannot have an irresponsible father, a very wicked mother, come to a church. What do you think that bad father will become as a HOD? He will translate his understanding about fatherhood. And that's what he's going to use to lead the department. Are we together now? Every armed robber came from somewhere. He didn't fall from a tree. Are we together? Every prostitute or harlot came from somewhere. All those who are making a mess of society came from family. And a platform like this, the church is an institution that influences the mindset of people. Gives them very, very scriptural perspectives on leadership. How do you excel in your place of work? It matters to God. How do you excel in your endeavor? It matters to God. How do you excel in your business? How do you do it right? Number what now? Number four. Every pastor must teach his congregation on principles of relationships relationships are everything in this kingdom 
your breakthrough comes through relationships the tragedy in your life comes through relationships jesus understood this he didn't he didn't play with relationships We lose opportunities because we do not know how to master relationships. We lose destiny helpers. Money is not everything as important as it is. One ability to maximize a quality relationship will give you what one billion will not give you. Relationships. Hallelujah. Number five. Every pastor must be able to teach his congregation how to be agents of national transformation. Every pastor must be able to teach his member life applicable teachings. Teachings they can take outside of the confines of the church back to society and begin to shape cultures and change systems with it listen let me tell you the churches that command influence in every territory are the churches whose impact are felt even sociologically it's not just by buying rice or giving people sewing machine or or you know uh, buying pot or killing cow those things are important but it's not just about doing things it's about institutionalizing a mindset within a territory so the church becomes noted everybody within that territory benefits there are so many people benefiting from koinonia the national union of road transport workers are benefiting rental services benefiting mtn glow airtel benefiting are we together now there are many people who may not be Christians but will fight to protect the continuity of koinonia because they can see how it translates to the well-being of their own lives. So you build people intentionally. You don't just sit down and say, I got up and I think I feel like saying this today. And then people jump. And then at the end of the service, you ask the people, what did you gain? And the person tells you, honestly, me too, I don't know, but my, my spirit picked something. You are not going to grow that way. I assure you. Did you know, did you know that I've taught us here, it's not your intention that becomes your reality, but your conviction. You want to be great. But something about your belief will limit you. You want to be greatly anointed. But there is something you must know. I'm telling you, you will thank me in the years to come for these fruits. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm chasing after you. No matter what I have to do. I need you more and more. I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do. I need you more and more, more and more, more and. When you grow spiritually and otherwise, it becomes, there is something, there is a name God gives this kind of people. He calls them a delightsome land. You know what a, a delightsome, a likable personality. Something about your transition in the spirit creates an effect in this realm. And so you are well desired. Well desired. I was telling the school of ministry um, students yesterday that the project, this project you see called Koinonia, the benefit of Koinonia will be experienced in the next 10 to 20 years, not now. Hallelujah. My target is people from ages 0 to 45. Outside 45, you can join. But the target, that that generation of individuals 
is what we want to target in the next 20 years many people you see now 70 years etc in business in politics no matter how they want to hold on to power many of them would have transited it will now be our turn hallelujah so it's a project just like satan destroyed america when god's generals were there preaching what was he doing to, they forgot about their children and the devil just targeted them from 25 years they were there in the crusade and the children were they left the children and the wives at home because they felt those people did not need change so the men of god were preaching and the devil said i, I give up on these ones but he started growing with them channel o came MTV came, right? All kinds of things came. They grew. They didn't train them. They grew. They shaped their ideology. They are the ones today who are the leaders, prime ministers, heads of banks, heads of institutions. And so a system runs. I mean, they play the world like a chess, but it's going to change. I know we don't look like it yet. I assure you, you quote me. I've been saying certain things that I'll keep saying. We will all be great. And the best part is that we will know ourselves. That's what will happen. Don't trivialize the power of the Holy Spirit. Just give him time. He will surprise you. Give him time. Write this word down. Let's begin our teaching strategic kingdom influence um let's define influence very quickly i have a lot to talk about and i want us to finish very fast amen and amen and amen influence what is influence the capacity to have an effect influence is the capacity to have an effect on the character development and behavior of something or someone Please make sure you are writing. The capacity to have an effect on the character, development, and behavior of something or someone is called influence. When you sustain an ability to create an effect in somebody's behavior, somebody's character, and his development, we call that influence. Number two, Influence is the ability and the platform to change mindsets, comma. Influence is the ability and the platform to change mindsets, comma. Shape opinions and move others to act in a certain way. Change mindsets. So, the ability and the platform to be able to change mindsets, shape opinions, and move others to act in a certain way is called influence. How we need this. One of the keys to kingdom advance in the 21st century is not just evangelism. It's called influence. And I add kingdom influence. We have a mandate as a church. Listen, listen. We are not just here roaming around, wondering what to do with our lives. There is a mandate upon us. That mandate is found in Genesis 1, 26. Help us, media. Genesis 1, 26, Matthew 6, verse 10, and Mark 16, 15 and 16. Genesis 1, 26, Matthew 6, verse 10, Mark 16, 15 and 16. It reveals our mandate as the church. Every one of you under the sound of my voice is part of those to make this mandate come to pass. And God said, Genesis 1.26, Let us make man after our image, our likeness, and let them have sovereign control, dominion, sovereign control, the power of legislature, the ability to extend an influence over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, the cattle, and over all the earth, over every creeping thing and everything that creeps upon the earth. 
we are God's managers. The state of the earth today is a revelation of our failure. Our inability to manage this domain of God's kingdom. We have a mandate as a church. Matthew 6 verse 10. Everyone read. Jesus was teaching this in what we have believed to be the Lord's prayer. One to read. Thy kingdom come. How? By your will being done in earth. Exactly as it is in heaven. Listen. Heaven is the way it is for two reasons. One, the presence of God. Two, a culture. A culture. A culture. There is a culture that makes heaven heaven. And God is saying when you when we pray this is god's desire that his kingdom his sovereign rule will find expression in this our sphere in the exact way in other words reproduce the culture of heaven in your environment it's a mandate and then he further expands on how to do it mark chapter 16 mark 16 15 to 16 are you there media please help us you're giving us mark 10 you have to correct it please mark 16 15 okay and he said unto them read on please one to read go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature hold on the first assignment is go that means he expects a body that is moving action go then he tells you the strategy he says he didn't say go around the street he says go into enter a system called cosmos don't just go around thank god for sharing tracks and all of that but he gives you an idea his system of invasion i want you to enter a strata of human activities and when you are establishing that strata he said preach the gospel not to every human being not to every human being to every creature creature everything alive should feel the impact of the gospel communicate that influence and that ideology write this down our mandate as a church not koinonia i mean the global church the ecclesia our mandate as the church is to establish the lordship of christ i will keep drumming this till we get it again and again establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men that's the first dimension to establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men and the instrument we use to produce this is called the gospel the gospel the gospel is not just a message the gospel is an instrument the end of it is to establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men number two to extend this is my concern tonight to extend the culture and authority of heaven across every territory and strata of human activity i'll take it again to extend the culture and authority of heaven to extend the culture and the authority of heaven across every territory and strata or sphere of human activity listen if all we do is establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men that's important but we must go the extra mile to make sure that every strata of human activity also come under the influence of the Christ. Look up, please. Let me tell you where our lukewarm attitude came from. Our lukewarm attitude came from preachers who in an attempt to make us have the perspective of eternity in view have trivialized the necessity of the church today. Are we together now? So in a bid... To teach us and prepare us for rapture teach us about the second coming of christ etc etc right we we push it to the limit 
and then we give people an idea like every other thing is a waste every other thing don't don't worry about building no house don't build any business don't do anything is unnecessary just make sure you love god and remain rapturable and we say that to justify and then we find out that after 20 years jesus has not come but your child has come but your bills have come these are the ones that are coming jesus that you are preparing for is coming that's true but he has not come but your bills have arrived right the need for um your responsibility has arrived we have to be careful the way we teach people things many of us are well-meaning people but we are victims of an ideology that must be balanced i'm always obsessed with balance of course we have the other side of the equation people who are so careless about the things of god they are just carnal all they want is cars houses oh this and that and that they are, they are so carnal those kinds of people will go to hell when jesus comes because they are obviously not living with eternity in view but there is a balance everyone say there is a balance There is a balance so we have an assignment to extend the culture when promise was you know talking to us i'm sure some of you were shocked looking at him you cannot imagine that a gentleman like this was keeping dreadlocks and wearing earrings all around when he came to zaria you think he just wanted to wear it he was reacting to something within him somebody told him that appearance or that state was equal to manhood and masculinity and so he was a victim of his mindset what happened to him not just deliverance but what happened to him was a translation another idea an alternative structure came upon his life see you don't change people by just flogging them insulting them castigating them or telling them do this when you tell somebody do this the person will not do it he's reacting to something within him if you don't change that's why they bring people out of prison and they say make sure you don't steal again and you see the person standing they say sign here and he's signing one month later they say ah they say honestly this time around this and that and that because they they don't create programs that influence the minds of the people you cast away that spirit and change their paradigm and then you win them amen let me discuss our mandate and the 21st century i really want this to be relevant to us the mandate of the church i think one of the confusion in the church right now is how to be able to weave kingdom living and the reality of our changing society whether you believe it or not times are changing say times are changing the only constant thing in life is change the 21st century has brought in a lot of changes a lot of changes changes in the way even some of us who are young met certain things that we can even relate to and say ah things have changed we're not so old like that but at least we can look back and be able to say yesterday there was xyz today is, is now obsolete not to talk of our parents and our fathers and mothers here they can tell you a lot of things we have no idea some of our little ones here don't know what a typewriter looks like some of them when they grow i'm sure they will not even know what a stove looks like i'm sure by the time they are adults will be using e-cookers <laughs> oh don't limit the mind of man believe me who knew that somebody will create something as as much as i mean hundreds of tons and then lift it up in the air just like that even you you can't hang in the air yet plane that is heavier than you can rise up in the air so don't don't trivialize the power of the mind cultures have changed the interests of people have changed perspectives have changed technology has changed a lot of things technology has changed our appetites the world right now is only hours away from anywhere 
anywhere hours away i'm sure that in the in the next future or in, in the next uh, maybe five ten years i'm sure you may not have to dial numbers to call them again they will program them to work with your mind i just think of nas and his phone beeps it can happen i mean there's artificial intelligence in phones phones can feel phones can record they can have memories so the 21st century is here and what is the attitude as far as our mandate is concerned because the old ways of doing things even as far as kingdom advancement will no longer be effective i think it was school of ministry again i was telling them did you know that right now you can stand near an influential man's daughter attempting to preach to her they can just snap you and in five minutes the police are coming to catch you and they'll say you are harassing her are we together now you are harassing her so the world the world is is gradually strangling the opportunities the access points we have to reach people and we must be able to reinvent ourselves by the spirit of god to adjust to the change and yet be effective in communicating our mandate is god blessing us one of the tragic things about the metamorphosis of the church with respect to the current change is that most of the change that is being effected in the church is not effected with the authority and the supervision of the holy spirit let me tell you what happens when you try to adjust to the 21st century outside of the holy spirit you will become something else completely something else there are pastors under pressure to turn their churches to align to the 21st century please listen to me there are businessmen there are there are entrepreneurs there are all kinds of people families the the paradigm of fatherhood parenting leadership is being compelled to change to adjust to 21st century living but you see a believer is not just one who is born again a believer is one who has submitted to the governing authority of the kingdom and that your change must be with the holy spirit supervision so that he can tell you which attributes are timeless that will not change and which ones are flexible enough not everything in the christian life is permitted to change there are timeless things there are components of the believer's life that must remain constant and i'll tell you where we get this teaching from first corinthians 9 22 please i need to balance this teaching is god blessing us already first corinthians 9 22 this is the bible stand that many contemporary preachers sadly have picked in and we have brought it to seemingly be a strategy now i believe in metamorphosis i'm teaching you change now but that that change must be guided by the wisdom of the holy spirit everyone read this is paul writing to the corinthian church one to read to the weak became as i as weak that i may gain the weak are we together read on i am made all things to all men that i might by all means save some now paul is saying something interesting here let me translate this for you paul is saying i can become anything to anybody this is a nice verse for satan to take advantage of meaning become a smoker to smokers are we together become a prostitute to prostitutes to win them that's not what the bible is saying but that's what has happened in many churches in our obsession to metamorphose and become relevant in the 21st century we have been misguided by this scripture and many things that happen there are churches where members vote the sermon for the week that the pastor preaches are we together there are churches where all kinds of things happen now i don't insult these people at least they are serving god but that's that's dangerous we are removing certain ancient landmarks so as i attempt to teach us on that's why i call this strategic kingdom influence not just kingdom influence it must be strategic meaning the holy spirit is involved hallelujah the idea listen the idea of paul here is that i am able to make adjustment the idea here is not an idea about leaving your convictions it's an idea of making 
adjustment the summary of this entire communication is that paul is saying because of the reality of my society i am able to make adjustments listen any church any pastor that cannot adjust should be ready for empty pews i repeat any pastor any businessman any ceo any worker that cannot adjust notice i didn't say leave your convictions adjust means to create allowance for the excesses of people adjust means to create allowance for the limitations of people adjust means to create allowance for the perspectives of people when you become rigid and stringent forget about advancing the kingdom in today's world one of our fathers who has done that most remarkably that is a model for all of us is papa e. E. Adeboe. i've studied the redeemed christian church very carefully and what had been the secret of their exponential growth and influence i will tell you the key is this flexibility not compromise there is a difference between compromise and flexibility papa Iya deboe is a man of strong convictions he's very conservative in his approach to christianity alongside his wife but he realized that if i must achieve the mandate of seeing every redeemed church or at least in every two or three houses let there be one redeemed member i must be flexible enough and yet uncompromising the key is to maintain your convictions but give allowance for the conviction of others let them be able to find a place in your vision and so you see that it began to open up different models of redeemed branches and so you can see a redeemed branch that is generally conservative still adhering to the foundational tenants and you can see one that is quite modern in fact very modern you may not know that this is redeemed his job as a man of god is to ensure that the central leadership sustain the foundational um, model and the understanding of redeem this is a winning strategy so you can find redeem in france you can find redeemed in um in in certain places that you would not expect many pastors are unwilling to bend we are stringent on our ideologies and we do not want to create flexibility so the key is that we must be able to make adjustment everybody say adjustment adjustment is one key to strategic kingdom advancement you cannot say i cover my hair i don't i don't believe in wearing trousers for instance or leaving hair. and you say any other person i come across who i see with trousers or hair not covered is a devil i tear the person down you are going to be frustrated at the same time nobody should put pressure on you to influence your convictions unnecessarily you have a right to sustain your convictions but at the same time you must be able to give room are we together now i'm teaching us on our mandate and the 21st century i've gone to minister in several places and um when you go to minister in places you'll be amazed the approach of many people I've gone to ministries that are very conservative. Very, very conservative. I've gone to other ministries that are generally charismatic and unorthodox. I've gone to ministries that are wild. I've gone to ministries that are lawless. That one is not charismatism, it's lawlessness. Yet, in the midst of it, I have been able to make adjustments without violating my convictions. Are we together? Koinonia runs on certain convictions. But part of the reason why God has blessed us is because we have been able to make adjustments. Are we together now? Adjustments that can allow people to, to come in and be able to not necessarily incorporate their ideologies, but give them space to know God for themselves. And in that knowing God, many people begin to adjust not by force but on the strength of the information that is coming to them 
is god blessing us yeah. you cannot win people you resent you cannot stand and all of a sudden you see a lady with heavy makeup wearing a very tight trouser and all of that and you know you just give this atmosphere of look at this prostitute and this devil you want to kill me and your idea was to come and win her and then you come and stand and oh you are a sinner you see i will not listen to your message no no no, no. it has nothing to do with being angry i will not listen to your message you come to preach to me for 10 minutes you don't even know what my name is you are initiating me into a cult you are misrepresenting the love of christ at the same time i will not come and see you and you say ah uh, you really want to preach christ to me if prove that you love by coming to my house or coming to this I'm, I'm in the club if you really want to win me come and meet me at the club i won't come go to hell are we together there is a balance so that we don't begin to do stupid things. There are ladies that have entered relationship. You ask them why. They say, I'm on a code. Ah, you are not SSS. That's, that's, that's too costly. You say, I entered relationship. It's not love. Oh, I don't love him. Ask him. I, I am passionate about souls. You are getting it wrong. I'm trying to explain this scripture. I become all things to all men. Does not mean I leave my convictions to turn into everything. whether you are wearing jeans or suit you are a christian and being a christian is is exact there's no confusion about it christianity is not buddhism there are exact tenets there are exact foundational convictions write this down We must carefully study the word. Please, let's write. Let's hurry up. We must carefully study the word and adopt timeless scriptural strategies for effective kingdom advance. We must carefully study the word and adopt timeless scriptural strategies for effective kingdom advance. Listen, the key to kingdom advancement is found in the bible timeless secrets that can advance the kingdom through any culture any kind of civilization and when we study the bible we will find therein secrets that can survive any kind of sociological metamorphosis it doesn't matter what dispensation the truths there remain timeless keys to kingdom influence let's discuss now keys to kingdom influence ask and now give the nations to you O oh lord that's the cry of my heart distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us sing it one more time ask and i'll give the nations to you oh lord that's the cry of my heart Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. Keys to kingdom influence. Listen, I've told us that the key to strategic kingdom advancement is called influence. The new kind of evangelism that will break through any protocol and any hardness is called influence evangelism. The advocacy that comes when a man can gain a platform 
and is able to influence the convictions of people never trivialize influence and its effect to a person a territory a people and a civilization at every point in your life you are being influenced by somebody and you are influencing somebody keys are very important in the kingdom you hear jesus speak again about keys and i will give you the keys of the kingdom the keys of the kingdom are the mysteries the laws and the principles that give us access the keys of the kingdom are the mysteries the laws the principles that give us access there are keys to kingdom influence and in the name of the lord jesus christ i'm praying that as i begin to teach this as you embrace it you will step into a level of influence that will surprise you the lord spoke to us and said this is a year of multiplied grace and influence he expects us to do more and he's guiding us on how to get there number one the first key to strategic kingdom influence is to have a pace setting trailblazing global mentality write it the way i said it don't write your idea pace setting comma i took time to write it this way it's supposed to create an effect don't scatter it pace setting comma trailblazing comma global mentality write it and look at me let's cane out certain mediocrities in our mind we're on our way to better days. We're on our way to better days. Mm. We're on our way to better days. Hold on. Pace setting, trailblazing, global mentality. See, we, many of us are still growing. And we're still coming into the comprehension of how low and depraved our thinking and our ideology is. As marketed to us by our institutions, as marketed to us by our upbringing, as marketed to us by our Christian advocates, our pastors. We are largely victims of the thinking of a man who have sat under for many years. our approach the approach of the average christian is not global the approach of the average christian is not pace setting we are comfortable with mediocrity yet we want to command influence a music artist no global mentality no pace setting mentality so we are comfortable borrowing anything from anywhere not yielding to the spirit of creativity that will launch us into unimaginable feats there are many of us seated here who can do so much for god but our mindsets are small i have challenged the leaders again and again koinonia is an apostolic ministry this is only an a local platform for us to meet together but the approach is global the approach is, is way beyond Nigeria and Africa. You see, we must be able to excel. Let's look at a few scriptures. Matthew 5, 14. Then Deuteronomy 6, 2 to 3. Media, you have to help us. We really have to be fast. Jesus said this, Matthew 5, 14. Write it down and please look up. One, two, read. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. The second statement explains the first line. It says you are the light of the world. Then it compares you. It says you are a city. In other words, can a city that is set on a hill be hidden? Global approach to life. We start up businesses with no idea of global approach. The average business in Nigeria, if it lasts 10 years, is a miracle. 15 years is a wonder. We don't think far. 
right the average church do you know how many churches start in january and by december they are dead because the way the pastor started and was running you would think rapture will happen tomorrow and he runs no no sense of leadership no pace setter trailblazer mentality we come into a system and do the exact same thing listen listen there is a difference between a manager and a leader a manager maintains status quo a leader breaks new frontiers a true apostolic spirit is a groundbreaking spirit you cannot be under a ministry like this and then your thinking is still old Daniel 6, verse 2 to 3. Pace setting mentality. Hallelujah. This was the story of Daniel. Look up, please. Let's see the kind of mindset Daniel had. It's not just that he was called Daniel. He reigned over certain provinces. The Bible says, and over these three presidents. Sorry, I'm cutting from verse 1 of whom daniel was what please read it of whom daniel was first means a pace setter first means a leader surpassing ordinary standards he said that the princes might give accounts to them and the kings should have no damage verse 3 then this daniel was what everybody say pace setters this daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes why because an excellent spirit was it because he was a christian because he possessed certain things that made him irresistible and the king thought to set him over what influence as a result of a pace setting mentality how many Christians start their work and never dream of becoming the managers or the people at the highest echelons? They don't care. In fact, they run away. When they tell them they are considering you for promotion, they say, ah, but for what now? How about God? Is it that you don't know what? It's a demonic mentality. Whoever taught you that, is, it, it may be a sincere person, but that's a doctrine of demons that keeps the church bad. I love Jesus. When Jesus showed up, he broke status quo. Genesis 41, give us 33, then we move to 38 to 44, please, very fast. Sorry, we have to read these things because I want to press something in tonight. Genesis 41, give us verse 33, then we move to 38 down to 44. Now look up, please, everyone. This was the story of Joseph. Now, therefore, this is Joseph, advising pharaoh now therefore look out for a man discreet and wise whoever qualifies whoever has that mentality give him this kind of influence set him over the land of egypt there is influence for the taking but there is a requirement who is that one man in egypt who has sustained a paradigm of thinking that can produce this result give us verse 38 hear what the king says in response and Pharaoh said unto his servant, Can we find... Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. May that be your testimony. Amen. That even your enemies will sit together and say, Let's tell ourselves the truth. Can we find a trailblazer? That when the government wants to sow a seed as a government to a church, they turn and say, Which, which church is making impact that is consistent with the values of the government? Can we find such a one as this is? A man of whom the Spirit of God is. We are reading down to 44. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, Listen, for as much as God has showed thee this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Watch how cheap influence becomes. Thou shalt do what? I give you influence instantly. Thou shalt be over my house. I hope you know Pharaoh knew that Joseph was not an Egyptian. 
there are certain levels of mentality you have that will veto your background all this issue of we don't accept people from this state they've not found an exceptional person that's why that's when you see them breaking the rule they will say this is the first time we're doing it say that's that i'm a i'm a first timer i have i have the spirit of breaking new grounds thou shalt be over my house and according to my word shall all thy word shall all the people be ruled can you imagine that's a costly that's a risk from pharaoh it says only in the throne will i be greater than thou and pharaoh said unto joseph see i have set thee over how many all the land of egypt do you think that's good for the kingdom do you think Joseph's father and brothers would have been allowed to come to Egypt if he didn't have influence. Are we together now? Can you see the advantages of his influence? His influence afforded him to say, where is my father? The same way when you have influence, you can look at somebody and say, you said you are looking for a job, please come. I know you. Your being in Koinonia has qualified you. Even if you don't know anything, I know you love God and you can listen. We have preached people. We have, we have destroyed opportunities for the church to rise. Because of mentalities that we think are good. The church is almost an endangered species compared to the world's global brand in terms of advancement. We are there smiling, throwing ourselves under the anointing and then the world is, is gaining, is squeezing the church into a mold. And one policy can just write us away. And Pharaoh took off his ring, a symbol of royalty, from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck, 43. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, bow the knee. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. The last verse. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in the land. Shout influence. influence. Say it again. Influence. In our families, there's nobody to speak for us. When we are suffering, we just call on God directly. And God wants to answer, but there is no envoy, no human being that can partner with God to wipe our tears do you know it's a cause to have generations of people with no influential person in that family you hear people here say i'm the first person to go to school i'm the first person to get a job you know the danger every other person surrounds you like worms drawing from you you are any hundred thousand and there are 22 people waiting and hoping to receive their share of cake from you leadership is the passion to excel when i talk of leadership i don't just mean ruling leadership in terms of excelling the passion to excel at an uncommon level i'm explaining to you what pace setting trailblazing global mentality is in one word is leadership the passion to excel at an uncommon level so as to gain access over that sphere listen the reason why you excel is so that you can rise to the highest level and then be able to gain access. We need men and women who have access. And I tell you, Koinonia, hear me. This is what you are becoming. Are we together now? Oh, this is what you are becoming. Just give us time. In the next few years, in the next few years, you know the way if somebody is walking and he says, my name is Nas Dangote. Even if he's not related to Dangote, that name has already brought favor to his life. I trust God that Koinonia in the future will be, it, it will be like a, a signet ring of favor. 
I will never pastor and lead people who are failures. We just comfort ourselves. And no, 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 no. A passion to excel. You are in agriculture. You are thinking, how do I lead? Not Kai. How do I get my small one mudu of beans? Me and my wife. She's not even complaining. You are not pace setting. You are not trailblazing. Remember that if all you want to do is succeed, you are carnal. But if you want to succeed to gain influence and allow God come into that space, you are an ambassador. Always attach a kingdom motivation to your pursuit. And then there is no level of pursuit that will embarrass you. I will never be small. I hate it and it is for the kingdom. Number two. The second key to kingdom influence is character. You want to command kingdom influence. In our generation today, you need character. Everybody say character. What is character? Christ-likeness. Moral uprightness. Second Peter chapter 1. From verse 5 to 9. Talks to us about sustaining kingdom character. Just write it down. We may not have time to look at it. Listen. Brothers and sisters, please look at me. If you want to be global. Those outside, please pay attention. If you want to go far in business, in ministry, in your career. You have to curb a lot of excesses in your life. The Bible says, listen to me. The Bible says, um, all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. All things are permissible, but not all things are necessary. On your journey to influence, there are weights. Some things are not necessarily sinful. They are just weights. Weights. Character. Moral uprightness. From the way you speak, the way you dress, the way you behave. You want to be a leader. You are in a place they are sharing food. Ah, I have not got you. You are just stretching. You are not a leader. God cannot promote you to disgrace him like that. There is a decorum. There is a protocol for great people. I'm not just talking about pretending and, and living a fake and a false life. But you must be disciplined. You are dressing, you iron your clothes. You talk well. You see people, you greet them. You don't see somebody like our daddy here and say, Ah, daddy, how are you, prof? You know, as if you are talking to, to yourself. No. Character. There are many people who do not have character. Moral uprightness. You see an elderly woman moving your mother, something you cannot help her pick up the load. No character. There's this wild nature that our generation of young people have that we must tame and cut away. We, we associate youthfulness to wildness. That means if you are temperate, people think you are too cold. Be wild. You won't be a leader that way. Look at how teachers, the teachers in our school, who teach our students. You see how they dress? You see how they talk? Now, I'm not against anything, but a young man comes, rings in his five hands. I'm not against all of those things, but you are not, it's not seen, but it's a weight. The students are watching you. The next day, they come with it too. You sag your jeans. A teacher, you see jeans with, um, um, uh, what they call it, all kinds of, there's this patch jeans that you see that exposes everywhere. I mean, there's nothing for the imagination. Believe me, if nobody has told you anything is wrong with it, Joshua Selman is saying it, write it, mark me. Something is wrong with that kind of thing. You won't go far with it. I'll preach, oh. Hallelujah. See, there is a protocol to greatness. You must give up something to go up. You cannot 
go up with everything you wear with down is you are down because a weight held you if you are ready to move up be ready to drop some things vulgar communications don't speak intelligently many of us today cannot construct a good letter a proposal because our vulgar speaking and communication has destroyed us you are writing something to apply for a job you are writing you as you for as letter four you see that i need a job from you thanks and the manager looks at it and says look at look at all this nuisance to our company we have labored to build ourselves and these people are coming to destroy us see our generation interprets modesty as weakness when your life is temperate you feel guilty for it because we live in a generation where you must be loud and wild to be thought of those people will not last long history is full of many of them prison cells are full of many of them they created their own rules to life everybody say i'll be a man of character say it i'll be a man of character or a woman of character yes every bad wife was a bad human being every irresponsible father was an irresponsible human being every bad leader was a bad human being you bring in your personality you bring in your mindset it doesn't just change when you become ceo it's an attitude hallelujah moral uprightness you are calm not the person moving around gossiping about everybody saying everything about everybody no only cheap people do that only idle people do that hallelujah there are rules for greatness you ignore them you will never be great the level that God has brought us in ministry by the grace of God. You see all these people inside and outside. I honor God and I bless them. But never make a mistake. They didn't just come just because of the anointing. There are factors combined together. This is what I'm teaching you. See, let me tell you. People never become loyal to you until they probe your life. And they are satisfied that you are worth being loyal to loyalty is not a gift you earn it are we together there are so many people who see especially some of us young people and they think the loyalty is just because of solidarity no loyalty is a product of a track record people probe your life and come to a point where they are satisfied with your convictions and they they are they are they are comfortable that you are a leader worth submitting to you don't command influence just because you think you are spiritual character there are many pastors who don't have character you just get up and go and disturb somebody's house early in the morning peace be out to this house and pastor so 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 bam 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 madam is there tea you think it's a nice thing they are marking you you represent boredom to them no character are you anointed yes will you last like that no That's how we inconvenience a lot of people. You now meet somebody and prophesy to the person and say, transfer 7,000 or 10,000 to my account. God keeps quiet and you think he was right. He was very wrong. It's just his mercy that overlooked it. There are pastors who do that. The moment they say, I want to pray for you, what they say is, I want money from you. Moment they pray for you, they just say, transfer 2,000 to my account so that he can activate the faith. There is a place for seed faith but many of the things we do that's why a young man right now is associated with the moment parents see certain people even some of us young ministers you go to pray in somebody's house and they are already suspecting they are looking at you you have to talk for five minutes for them to eat to loosen up and say oh this guy this guy looks very cultured character you get to somebody's house in five minutes you have entered their kitchen they are prime plantain, you carry one, you eat the world. They are watching you. There are some of us like this. I must talk to you. I want you to become something. And we must curb these things. Don't 
don't do that say no 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 we are free they always allow me no see let me tell you part of character is the ability to say no to some things that are even good you must see there are certain things that is like Esau you are trading your birthright for it there are times people have carried fat seeds and and checks something to give me and the Holy Spirit will say no 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 because in their minds they are feeling guilty they are not just blessing me out of conviction they just feel tall this man of God has prayed and you see them I'm ready to go and see them pinching themselves giving signs and somebody will enter and they come out and then I tell them I say no 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 I receive it I bless it and I sow it back and they say ah man of God can we have your number please honestly you see that you have earned loyalty because you have let them know that you your convictions are greater than money for some of us Abba, you collect and count it and say Abba madam you too Abba what is all this how much is my transport from where I left I did night vigil deliverance the money you are dropping 10,000 you drop it on the table there and say madam add something are you fake no but you are a suspect it's easy for people to think you went to collect power some of us the way we dress uh, now please um don't 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 feel bad I'm, I'm just trying to work on you i've seen men of god i'm um, please i'm not uh i wish i don't have to preach this boy i have to obey god from your hairstyle the way you look you look like a thief you look like i mean the way you are dressing and even when you are talking people are afraid they are not at ease honestly you may not be you may be the nicest person available but something about your lack of character and environment you tell a lady i want to see you she's shaking because she doesn't even know what can happen no come on i want you to be on a project that you must be trusted be on a project be trustworthy not perfection but you are sincere enough to be trustworthy when people commit their loyalty to you it's a trust you don't disappoint it how many pastors have dashed down the loyalty of people loyalty is a trust brothers and sisters so god is talking to some of us now who are careless with little little things you just sit down and send the text to four or five sisters you make jollof rice for me you my birthday is coming by june i want a suit sam you buy uh, this and that there are men of god that do that i'm sorry if if you are in that category forgive me but it's wrong I cannot imagine myself coming now to tell heads of department all of you bring hundred hundred thousand my birthday is coming in june choir you bring bring buy me shoe uh, all the pastors <laughs> pastor femi and alpha and you who have congregation so you people you ah, ah. god didn't send you to be a burden to the people sometimes we do these things sincerely but i'm telling you now there is need for adjustment don't do that see bless the people and let them bless you based on their perception of who they think you are they will surprise you they will surprise you there is nobody who will have a track record of transformation from your life who will not give back to you amen let's go to the next point some of you don't seem to like this point the third key to strategic kingdom influence is excellence excellence what is excellence the quality of doing things well the quality of doing things well write this down the difference most times is not what you do but how you do it the difference brothers and sisters that makes you a great man of influence most times is not what you do is how you do it while i was babbing this this evening i was talking to my baba and i was just telling him that do you know that there are babbing saloons in abuja 
that you will pay thousands of naira and the people are not as good as him but you will pay because of how they do it the clipper for barbin is different for carving is different there is really nothing there it's just packaging but because of that packaging you will pay for it he was telling me that the, i think it was oga jordan he should be here he went to abuja or so and then he went to bab somewhere with his brother and they paid three thousand they gave them wine and chinchin is that what you cannot buy how much is chinchin ten naira how much is this coke this 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 uh, heaven pure heaven wine 250 add it together you paid three thousand and then you watch match but listen it's excellent so you'll be rewarded when you are excellent you name your price you see that What you are doing now, are you excellent in it? Please let me talk to us. I salute, I know many people in Koinonia are engaged actively in all kinds of things. But I want to challenge you, are you excellent? Oh, you make kunu, you think it's small, but are you excellent? Why don't you think of a way of doing it very well? Don't say kunu is not nice. If you make it well, I will buy it. I think someone in the protocol he has um, some popcorn machines on campus and then i told him i said i want to taste your popcorn let me see what and what do you put there and he was telling me what he said all that one is stories bring it let me taste let me know whether you are excellent see let me tell you something the minimum standard in our world today is excellence even if you don't have the finance to grow into it have the mindset first so you have only one cloth and that one cloth will make it look as if you are not excellent. You are because already you, you've had an ideology of excellence. You iron it. You look smart. It's not doing ministry that makes you excel. It's how you do it. It's not preaching that makes you excel. It's how you preach. It's not doing business that makes customers come to you. It's how you do it. It's not doing your job that makes you excel, but how you do it. Exceptional people most times are not necessarily super skilled people. They are just people who have been able to force their value to be recognized. Excellence. Say, I'll be excellent. Say it again, I'll be excellent. Number four. Give me a few minutes here and we'll pray. Open your spirit and your ears right now to what you're about to hear. <clears throat> the fourth key in our day in the 21st century to strategic kingdom advancement is called results. We're on our way to better days. We're on our way to better days. We're on our way to better days. Uncommon results is one of the greatest key, greatest keys to strategic kingdom influence. John 15 verse 8. Listen, I will share with you certain things about results today. That will make you go back to your life and you will insist that i must produce results john 15 verse 8 15 not 5 15 verse 8 okay hearing is my father glorified read on that ye bear fruit much fruit exceptional fruit notable results it says so by so doing you will prove that you have been following me diligently listen brothers and sisters our world today thrives on results pace setters influencers are those who command results remember my teaching commanding results i want you to pay attention right now write this down uncommon supernatural result is the end of all argument 
uncommon supernatural result is the end of all argument creation is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of god waiting for their manifestation i tell you i feel the anointing of the spirit as i'm talking about this something will happen something must happen to you tonight uncommon result is the end of all arguments write this down results demonstrate dominion and control over obstacles limitations and circumstances results demonstrate dominion and control over obstacles limitations and circumstances oh hallelujah i'm a believer in the word of god results listen look at me when you produce results in your life it shows certain things that you have authority you have got the keys that commands authority i told you that the fear of man is the inability to control situations and circumstances there are a number of people that were brought here that are sick this night that's 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 a situation that's a circumstance you hear them say circumstances beyond our control and whoever can bring it under control must command influence mark zuckerberg wields tremendous influence because he was able to bring a particular dimension of science under control on common supernatural results are a sign that you truly have authority over circumstances part of the reasons why there are so many people inside and outside is because by the grace of god and with all humility to an extent god has been able to grace us to show that we have sustained certain keys to command consistent control and dominion over certain aspects of life i was in kaduna when we ministered and we were in the restaurant together um, with my people we were just trying to eat have a meal before we rush and come back to zaria and while we're there just trying to order a meal a woman looks at me and um ah the woman was looking at me and now I, I started feeling embarrassed i said madam do i know she said you are pastor joshua i said yes she said ah well done sir and i looked i said ah, madam how are we you know i was playing with her little boy and i said where do i know you and the woman just nodded she said she was going to tell me a little story and she said i came for counseling two years ago looking as wretched as anything a single mom with a child no hope for marriage finances crashing everything being destroyed and you prayed for me and you prophesied you told me that they were going to call me back to the job and they would send me to the marketing department and i should go there say man of god that's exactly what happened they sent me to the marketing department and i was i was sad and she did her hand like this i saw a ring she said two months ago i got married even with the child she pointed outside and i saw a clean black e-class she said will you believe that i will be the owner of this brothers and sisters say results one result will end every kind of argument every kind is god speaking to us results pastors produce results produce results you know why our prayer department by the grace of god is like it's like second koinonia it's like midweek service of koinonia for many people because of results they are praying and they are seeing results nobody will come and spend two three hours here just like that people are not idiots results by the time your life listen i don't care how much you pray or fast if there is no result you'll be frustrated the end of your work with god is that god ah, you come to a point where 
you become so full of the anointing of the spirit you can produce some common results fill me up until i overflow i want to run over i want to run over fill me up until i overflow i want to run over i want to run over sing one time fill me up till i overflow i want to run have a passion i like you to look at every area of your life and be tired of being barren of results you are a pastor no results no healings no miracles no salvation no transformation and you explain away and say it's because i'm telling the truth people are not coming all those things are flimsy excuses results when a family that is barren comes and there is a miracle that's results there are some results you cannot argue with no no you're a businessman don't worry that people don't believe in you my brother produce results and you will close the mouth of any and everybody even if all you are doing is parking suck away just produce results let me tell you something it's frustrating to make noise about things you don't have results to show because your results are supposed to be your noise in the school of greatness not your words i can do this i am this and that no i can pray where is the fruit of the prayer i can fast where is the fruit of the fasting i am warded where is it results you want to command influence in our world today you need results you need results this is the apex of this teaching tonight you need results supernatural results write the following things about results results are a product of correct understanding and application of laws and principles results are a product of correct understanding and application of laws and principles let me show you a scripture that would probably really really surprise you give us matthew 14 please let's look at it matthew 14 Matthew 14 we read from verse 23 and um, we read down to the end let's hurry up and when he had sent the multitudes away everybody watch this he went up into a mountain apart to pray and when the evening was come he was there alone rush media just continue but the ship was now in the midst of the sea tossed with waves for the wind was contrary there was a situation those in the ship could not control next verse and in the fourth watch of the night jesus went unto them doing what brothers and sisters the same water the same water was responding differently to jesus the same water you know why because jesus was operating on certain principles are we together now next verse and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea they were troubled saying it is a spirit notable results and they cried out for fear there is a kind of result that will not only make people celebrate you they will be afraid 
that one will move beyond the realm i watch some of you as you are sitting down and the power of god begins to break out i see everybody looking around and you are just trying to adjust trying to show like i'm, I'm okay i'm not afraid there are certain results that can happen in your life it will make the heart of men fear but straightway jesus spake to them saying be of good cheer it is i he said be not afraid verse 28 and peter said unto him lord if it be thou bid me come unto thee on the water 29 mm. and he said come and when peter was come down out of the water he walked on the water to go to jesus 30 this is my verse of emphasis but when he saw the wind boys terrors he was afraid and began to sing and he cried saying lord save me look at this two people are standing on water one is sinking the other one is standing was it the water never the water same nigeria same economy same dollar rise same everything are we together now same harshness in ministry same being in the north where they say people are persecuted but then you sustain a mystery jesus was standing and when peter cried he lifted peter and peter stood just like him meaning you can bring people to your experience listen there was something jesus knew that made that water treat him that way there is something you do not know that is making your life turn around someone is walking through it like this life is responding to people in different ways on the strength of the laws they have kept please hear me correct understanding an application of laws and principles number two results are a product of mastery 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 exceptional competence you have mastered the laws that produce them so thorough that you do it unconsciously that's the kind of attitude that produces results number three results are a product of diligence there are many times you keep knocking on the door of destiny until it opens sometimes you may knock for many years but you continue diligence and persistence is what separates men from boys diligence number four and i want you to leave this take home this one tonight results are a product of the presence of the anointing ah the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference when results become supernatural and consistent then there's no limit to the influence of the person producing it when results become notable and consistent listen listen if you produce results for a short time it will not create the effect it needs to be consistent that's why you find out that god can be using a particular man of god or a church he can continue for many years and then one is like he hits a breaking point in the spirit in one year he will step into a dimension of increase consistency consistency i was watching a video of steve's joe late steve's joe apple founder 1991 1991 he was talking to their team of executives and if you hear that guy's idea as at 91 everything he was saying they would do they did men who produce results brothers and sisters if you're part of this ministry you must produce results not just receive results produce results in every area hallelujah when our sister came up and said she got five points i laughed but i was impressed with her but i'm not impressed enough until we find 20 people in a row that's notable enough that's the type we can clap with and smile set your standard so high even when they are clapping for you you are still pressing to move higher if you set your standard too low you will hit it easily that's what mediocrity is setting low standards 
I like her. She said four point something. When she hit it, she set another one. You must set a very high standard. There is such a high standard that I put in ministry. That's why I don't compete. Because the standard alone, I keep competing against that standard. It's enough to engage me. Hallelujah. I want to get to a point where I will be so full of the Holy Ghost. So full of the anointing of His Spirit. I'm telling you. You don't have to start praying for people. It doesn't matter what you are talking about. They will pay to get your presence in a place. Even if it's just to sit down. They know they will never be the same. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. Please fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over. Listen, let me challenge you, everybody here. Create a system that measures your growth. Don't mark your script by yourself and score yourself A and organize speech and price for yourself. You are a mediocre when you do that. Challenge your standard. Don't do small things and rejoice over it. Let me tell you something. The key to mediocrity is finding one person you are better than and settling down because of that. As a pastor, I'm better than this guy. As a great, I'm better than this guy. Those kind of people will never be my friends. Those who come around and start telling you who they are better than, no. Because they are the type who will fight anybody that rises. I, I'm not a product of all those kinds of things. There is enough, the assignment, the demand of the assignment is enough. You compete against the standard God has given you. There is a benchmark. Those who are men of God today were ushers in the Bible. Welfare personnel. Look at the condition to be in welfare. Full of the Holy Ghost. Welfare. To serve food. You needed to serve food with the anointing. So we are constantly moving. Thank God for what God is doing through the school of ministry. But we are rising. Thank God for what God is doing through our messages and the media ministry. But we are rising. The result is too small. The result is not yet notable enough. I tell you, compared to where we are going, this is child's play. We've not started anything. The level of excellence is still at its foundation. Foundation. We have not even done anything. That's how you challenge yourself. Don't sit down with your small business and come back with 5,000 and you are laughing and say, Kai, it's better than nothing. Be happy for where you are, but never want to remain there. Oh, what do you do? I'm into interior decor. Are you a, See, let me tell you something. Anything you are not competent in, just keep quiet about it. Talking about it will be disgracing yourself. There are so many people around. Ask them, what do you do? They say, I'm into interior decor. Really? Like who? Like what? How much can I pay you? Is there something you can do to me that will make me need you even if I don't like you? You have a restaurant can we eat in your restaurant if we have a guest coming can we take the guest to your restaurant and be comfortable i have a church can i come to your church and sit down and be sure that god will bless me oh i'm a driver like who where do you know challenge yourself don't mark yourself and say i'm good there are many talented people inside and outside Somebody wrote one song and came and sang it for me. I said, my brother, please go and work on it. God is helping you. Don't produce anything from this. Go and work on it. It's obvious you, I can show you at least five rules of music you broke on this. I told them, who is your role model? Who is your inspiration? They say, he mentioned expensive names as if it's just to talk. I said, how many of their videos do you have? Not their videos of the album they produce. Have you watched their stage rehearsals? Have you gone out of your way to find out how they rehearse? Listen, you don't learn from a man by watching his real life performance. You watch from a man by learning how he builds. 
you don't learn from Usain Bolt by seeing how he runs. No, you see how he rehearses. You don't learn from a man of God by just seeing how he displays the anointing. You learn the mystery of his secret place. Koinonia, I'm challenging you. God is taking us far. There are many of us here who would have entered certain levels of influence. Opportunities came and passed us by. is still passing us by because we have not mastered that key that will give us influence. There are so many people in this place you are in business you are the only one who knows you are in business because your products you don't know nothing about business you will not sit down and learn you will not grow everybody will be what are you doing i'm into real estate what are you doing i'm a ceo ceo of nothing there's no result sit down and learn many young people moving around with suit and bible and, and ipad what are you i'm a pastor my name is pastor pastor david revelation or david king or something that's not what will give you open the doors of ministry let me tell you something god knows as a person i am more than willing to invest into the life of anybody that is serious and ready to rise up believe me Anything you are doing, if it's not of standard, you see, and you don't get standard by default, you learn. Learn from the best. Don't learn from your colleagues. Your colleagues are your colleagues because something made you the same way. You rise up. You learn. Something you do not know is the reason why your life is limited. Something you know but have refused to believe is making you stick. God has given me access or common access to people and sometimes I look at where I am and it's like a dream I'm saying Joshua Selma what are you looking for in this place influence influence whenever you see a man of influence don't be angry it's not mistake results brothers and sisters I'm the firstborn in my family, but the way they are even treating me, I can't even talk. Result, result, result. Everybody say result. Produce result and you will switch the button. I'm 20 years, I'm 30 years. They are still treating me like a child. Result. Prove them wrong. Produce results. Don't make noise. I'm obsessed about studying successful people. I'm not ashamed. I, I have an appetite to confront my ignorance. I confront it with joy and gladness. I confront my ignorance with, with no sense of embarrassment at all. I like knowing what I don't know anything about. When I discover things in my life, I say, ah, this is what I didn't know. I go for that knowledge. I want you to produce results. The little level God has brought this ministry it's as a result of the results. The level of organization at the little level we are in, there is a formula to it. It's not just happening by mistake. That you come and as many as we are, there is still some level of organization. You don't guess, you learn. What you see today is what we knew yesterday. Tomorrow will reveal what we have known today. Please, I'm challenging you. We are going to pray. If you want to command influence, influence has monetary value. People will pay you and bless you in a way that will bring tears out of your eyes. And you will say, Lord, what, what is this? What are you doing to me? For if the cloud be full of rain, the Bible says they empty themselves upon the earth. Men of God, God is challenging us tonight stop being a mediocre surround yourself with three or four friends and say among all of them i'm the one who prays most that's nonsense mediocrity i'm the one who has revelation more mediocrity somebody writes jam and gets 120 and his friend gets 80 and he turns and says kai but I gap you by how many points? Let's count. No, I'm not, I'm not mocking. It's, it's not a mockery. I'm using it as an example. Don't feel bad. If 
didn't make it for jam. In fact, I, I hear they are going to write it. We'll pray for them at the end of the service. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. I know that this teaching is touching some of you. There are people who are seated right now. You can pretend like what I'm saying is not serious. There are many people standing outside right to the back. Some of them are just standing and thinking about their lives. I want to excel in my life. And I want my excellence to be intentional. Set a high standard, Koinonia. Set a high standard. Challenge yourself. When God gives you that influence, men will thank you for being influential. Your children will thank you. I was sharing with the School of Ministry students, some of the things I do today is no longer for myself. If it's for myself, I will stop doing some things because I've already created a system that will bless myself. I've started thinking transgenerational, both spiritual and physical, not just physical children. That anybody connected to me will be implicated for success just by being associated. And Lot went with Abraham. The secret place of Abraham implicated Lot until he was blessed. Who gets blessed following you? Or are you the type parents who warn their children about and say, don't follow this, this bad boy. He's going to spoil your life. Please, Koinonia, hear the voice of the Spirit tonight. It's time to settle down. Myself, settle down. And produce results. Stop guessing over your destiny. Prosperity is a reaction. It's not dash. Advancement in ministry is a reaction. We have never never said we'll raise a second offering in this ministry say oh we cannot pay for boss or we cannot do this no it has never happened and it will never happen in the name of jesus but it's, it's a formula it's a formula we don't have to manipulate you and squeeze your hand it's a formula find out what the formula is don't just enjoy and say kai this is a rich ministry find out what is the formula what is the secret of the anointing of the spirit upon our lives and the ministry find out do you care to find out are you humble enough to find out i always look at the people that are close to me and i always watch out for their interest in finding out process or results when i look at people who are close to me i like to know what their passions are if you are close to a man of god there are pastors here be careful because proximity can destroy your ability to learn. You are always seeing the result. Some of you come for Koinonia and you can sit down here and in the next five minutes, people are flying all over and just say, Kai Apostle is anointed. Do you know it is for the taking? Peter said, help me. And Jesus said, I can show you. Let me teach you what I'm doing that is making me standing. He lifted him. There is something you can learn. There is the secret of the war. There is a mystery you can learn. You can stand upon it. It's not abracadabra. It's not the more you see, the less you understand. The prophetic has a formula. The apostolic ministry has a formula. Don't guess in pride. Learn. Those who learn are the ones who rise. Please rise up on your feet. We're going to pray and I want everyone to please pray make sure you always don't miss the time of prayer here every time we share truths like this we must take our time to pray lift your hands and give God praise for this word you have heard it will change your life I will rise in your name Adonai you reign on high I will rise In your name Adonai You reign on high One more time Lord I will rise In your name Adonai You reign on high I like you to lift your voice and shout it like your destiny depends on it say in the name of Jesus today I decree that 
that I must produce results. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Results, oh God. Rekete koto shekete. Embra kata lava kata. Shekete kereto kore ba 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 ba. Mandela karia dabasha. Ekros kabaria daba. Era daba ya daba shekete ba Results, results. I pay attention to produce results. I pay attention. Results at the end of every argument. Results. The product of mastery. Results. The product of diligence. Results. The product of consistency. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. From today, I pay attention to laws, principles, and mysteries. I pay attention to the laws I need to know to excel. Lift your voice and pray for grace. Grace, oh God. I'm tired of poverty and suffering. I need to hold on to the loss. I'm tired of defeat and failure. I'm tired of everybody hating me. Everybody fighting me. There is something I need to know. Lord, show me the loss I'm violating. Show me the laws I'm violating. Show me the laws I'm violating. Kaparatos ke baradaba. Enkete lekoto sana baba Show me the laws I'm violating. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to mention every area of your life where you have not seen notable results and say every pride, every attitude stopping me from being humble to learn and produce results in that area. I take authority over you right now. Open your mouth and pray. Mention the area. Naaman was a captain of the Syrian army but 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 there was an area in his life please pray are you praying say Lord I humble myself I humble myself I humble myself I humble myself to learn I humble myself to master the art of war Aparatoko seke de belerebos lekate pras kata baladaba e praparado soto pregedeba Hallelujah One more prayer point before we have that prayer point, I want to make an altar call. Please, I want you to be serious tonight. We are not joking. Tonight is a very serious night. There are people here, inside and outside. From the beginning of my talk here, the word of God had come to you like, like a hammer. You know that you have mismanaged your life and you are seeking an opportunity to say, look, man of God, I've been looking for somebody to lead me to Christ. Tonight, right now, I'm going to make that altar call. Two kinds of people, please. There are many people outside. I know the Lord is showing me. There are people inside here. You are saying, man of God, I have managed my life by myself. And the truth is, I have mismanaged it. 
but God is giving me a new beginning and I want to take advantage of it. You've never committed your heart to the Lord or you have done what you think you know to be Christianity. But with respect to what God is doing now, you know that you are not making any progress. Please, these two categories of people, I count one to five, or not one to five, as we are praying, make your way to the front right now. Make your way to the front. While they come out, the remaining of us, please lift your voice and pray. And say, Father, use me, use me, use me. Do business with me, oh God. Lift your voice and pray. Please make sure you don't sit back as the Holy Ghost is speaking to you. This is your moment of change. This is your moment of change. Don't let any friend or the family you came with make you sit back outside. No matter how far, make your way. Make your way to the front. Use me, oh God. He said, thou art my battle axe, my weapon of war. Thou art my battle axe, my weapon of war. Thou art my battle axe. Keep coming. God bless you. Hallelujah. Listen, those of you standing here, I am very happy for you for this decision. Don't let anybody make you think you are wasting your time. There are some of us, you have destroyed your life with liquor, smoking, drinking, all kinds of things. Giving yourself to any and everybody. There is a new beginning. God wants to rehabilitate your life. You heard the story of this gentleman. There are still people like that you know i don't care whether you think you're a christian or not alcohol smoking drinking all kinds of things is destroying you please leave your seat and come and join them as i lead you to jesus christ leave your seat and come and join them even if everybody knows you in your area it's time to make a change it's time for a new beginning hallelujah all of you here some of you are giving your heart to christ for the first time some of you are making up your mind to be serious with God. You are welcome. Please lift your hands. And I want you to pray with me. Just one hand, your right hand. I want you to mean business. Please, if you know you are not going to be serious, go back to your seat. If you are here, be serious. You are not reciting a poem. Be very serious from the depth of your heart. No pinching, no laughing around. You are serious. We are with God here. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died for me this night I surrender my life I surrender my destiny to you I'm tired of wasting my life take over my life from this night I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that I will never be the same the power of sin is broken over my life in the name of jesus keep your hands lifted father i break the power of sin over everyone lifting their hands here every habit and every demon and every power that is tying anyone's destiny down i lose you tonight in the name of jesus every addiction everything that is not of god it dies and leaves you forever this night i'm praying for you from tonight you are stepping into a new dimension it will be from glory to glory in the name of jesus christ amen and amen Hallelujah. spirit of the living god we honor you you represent the presence of god in our midst Oh, yes, Lord, we honor you. Great is the measure of your royalty in our midst. We acknowledge you because you are mighty. Lord, we bless you. Bless our hearts tonight. Let Jesus be magnified. Let Jesus be glorified. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. Praise the Lord. I want to welcome everybody again tonight, especially for those who have come from far and near. The Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. It takes love for God to travel all the way down. And for those of you standing outside, we love you, we acknowledge you. The Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to pay attention tonight to what I'm about to teach because I believe that the truth contained in this revelation will set our hearts on fire and will cause us to be instruments of revival, will cause us to be carriers of the anointing. Like Mary said when she was up here, she said the anointing does not make the difference, the anointing is the difference. And in this season of revival, where the fire of God is sweeping across, it's important for us to understand that there is an alignment on our own path. And tonight's teaching is an attempt to position us so that we'll be mightily used by God. Hallelujah. There's nothing more frustrating um, to a man, to a believer, like um, having a prolonged period of work with God without an evidence. I call them consolations of your work with God. Now, I've taught us primarily that we do not seek God for anointing, for cars, for miracles, etc. However, in the process of our work with God, it is important that our lives begin to bear fruit, produce results that motivate us to keep pressing into Him. Hallelujah. And tonight I want to share what I truly believe by the Spirit is the hunger and the questions and the desire in the heart of many people as to why certain people are mightily used by God and others seem not to be used by God or just in little dimensions. I'll be sharing with you something very simple and very profound. So in one minute, I'd like us to pray and say, Lord, open my eyes. Please pray. Everyone, Lord, open my eyes. Open my eyes that I may see. Lord, I don't just want to look. I really want to see. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I just returned from a pastor's conference and... Um, yesterday was an awesome time and while I taught in that conference I felt a need to share some of the things that um, were communicated in that meeting because I believe that is very instrumental is is a teaching that will respond to our hunger and our desire for God hallelujah now many of us at one point or the other have had questions as to why God seems to use certain individuals very mightily. When you look at any territory, you find out that there are certain individuals that um, it seems God is doing business with them as far as the dispensing of his life and power and truth. They seem to be pivot in what God is doing. And yet there are others who 
are Christians, believers, but they always seem to be out of God's program. It looks like they don't weigh so much as far as the agenda of God is concerned. And this has brought a lot of frustration in the body of Christ because a lot of people have gone into different kinds of spiritual exercises in an attempt to upgrade themselves to become usable. But then I think that the true ingredients required to carry the power of God to be relevant as far as the move of God is concerned many people do not seem to sustain it so i want to just talk on three things and then we'll pray hallelujah i've seen people pray for days and hours hard vigils in an attempt to get the anointing in an attempt to gain spiritual power in an attempt to access the mysteries of the world and while that is not um it's not useless but then for many people, their disappointment is that at the end of all of that program, there is still a void and there is still a barrenness. Are we together now? So they fast. They add fasting to it. I mean, there is no time in the church where men fast and pray as it is right now. Are we together? There are ministries that literally do vigils every day. Every day. Marathon vigils for one month at a stretch yet you watch the quality of the believers that are produced from that experience and it's a cause for concern there are people who are i would call them fasting giants hallelujah and there are people who have stretched their human capacity from border to border i know a man who i prayed for who fasted for seven days dry dry fast i don't mean maybe you take juice later on and then you keep moving dry like nothing touches your mouth not even a toothbrush this is how people have stretched in the spirit in an attempt to be used by god the highest i've seen in my life is someone who fasted for 400 days 400 days non-stop hallelujah i rounded the 400 day with him and i prayed with him but as far as i know that gentleman is still searching desperately for the power of god till now what then is the missing link please pay attention to what i'm about to teach you because for some of you this will be the key that god will hand to you holy 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 Holy, holy, holy Holy, holy, holy The latest in the series of the pursuit right now is searching for the vessels that carry the anointing. I mean, once you are anointed, you are in trouble. Everywhere people see you, whether in the market, somewhere, I mean, there are all kinds of skills that are employed from those who fly and hold your leg and say, kill me, but let the anointing drop to those who will drop a seed, those who will use handkerchiefs to clean your shoes. Now, I'm not, I'm not against... Um, the expressions of their passion but i'm saying that people are desperate for the power of god and the glory of god but it looks like god is mising the power it looks like there are people who are saying lord empower me i mean give me this miracle working power this ability and 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 all of that i know so many pastors so many ministers who cry for the grace and the glory of god upon their lives they want his presence to be experienced in their meetings 
this that I'm about to teach you, the Lord taught me 10 years ago as the secret of his sustaining presence and power upon the life of a man. The Lord told me to do this and his presence and his power will remain upon my life. And by the grace of God, I have followed this thoroughly. I have struggled to teach what I'm teaching you people this night. Because I've taught us that it is wasteful to supply information to people who are not spiritually prepared to receive. Hallelujah. While I saw the gentleman who came and said they came all the way from Niger State and the ones from Makodi, I am very humbled to see what God is doing through these messages within this country and in various parts of the world. But there is a secret to it. This is what I want us to understand. There is nothing that is happening that is a mistake. There's nothing that is happening that is haphazard. And if you will pay attention to what I'm teaching you, please, even those who are working, workers and all of that, do your work, but please pay attention to what I'm teaching you. Hallelujah. So why is the power of God absent? Why is it that God seems to be limited to do business with many people? It looks like it, it, it seems like one out of every 1,000 or 10,000 are the ones who are really mightily used by God. I used to think that it was because others were carrying out less or more spiritual exercises. But as I've grown in the things of the Spirit, I've found out that that's not exactly the reason. Ready for it? Reason number one. Reason number one, I, I, I consider this, I consider this to be the fundamental determinant of the entrance of the anointing and the power of God in the life of a man. Your motif and your motivation. Your motif and your motivation. Let me tell you something. I have found out over the years that the state of your heart is the greatest determinant of the power and the glory of God upon your life. Beyond your fasting, beyond your prayer, beyond night vigils, beyond listening to messages, as important as those things are, the state of your heart overrides them all if you want God to do business with you. Now, so many people, well-meaning people, who want to see the miraculous power of God, they want to be mightily used by God, lack this one thing. The motive and the motivation behind their pursuit is corrupted from beginning. So every activity they carry out is corrupted on the strength of that foundational thing. Are we together? From those who seek God because they want to build a career around ministry. Those who have applied for jobs and it looks like jobs are not forthcoming. And they console themselves by saying, let's go to the vineyard and use ministry to build a career. Corrupted motives. Are we together? To those who desire the anointing to show their family members that they are not failures you were growing up and they told you that you'll be a failure in life and now you're saying lord give me the anointing to show my mother or my stepmother that i'm not a failure as well meaning as that motif is it is corrupted are we together now that's the reason why you find certain people, they seem not to be engaging in as much spiritual activity in terms of physical exertion, fasting, prayer. But it seems like God has so much interest in them. He will go beyond their personal spiritual lives to demonstrate his glory upon their life. Motive. Your motivation. I can tell you this and I tell you sincerely. Eight or nine out of every ten pastors 
and men of God that call me, send me text messages, sow seeds, and are desperately looking for anointing and grace. Most of them, their motives are corrupted. Are we together? So I can go for 40 days fasting, but God looks beyond the physical activity and he scans and judges my motive. This for me has been the ultimate determinant of the kinds of people that God does business with and that he will do business with in these days. Is God speaking to us? The state of your heart. Let's look at a few scriptures. John chapter 12. Oh come, oh come Emmanuel And ransom captive Israel. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. And ransom captive Israel. Rejoice. Rejoice. Emmanuel has come to us, he's Israel. John chapter 12, it says, And Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus, who had been dead, who was raised from the dead, and the Bible says, There they made unto him supper, and Martha served. Follow carefully. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at table. Now let's watch something that happened. And then Mary took a pound of ointment and anointed the feet. The Bible says, Okay, took a pound of ointment of spikenard, pure nard, very costly. Take note, very costly. Then the Bible says that she anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. Are we together? And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. And then something happened. Verse 4. And then one of his disciples, a man called Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, he responded to that act of worship. Verse 5. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? Now watch this. This is part of Jesus' ministerial cabinet. A woman comes and takes from her alabaster box according to one of the gospels and breaks it before his feet. Pure nerd. The Bible tells us it was her wages for one year. And she took it and broke it at his feet and used her hair that is the glory of a woman to wipe his feet. And then when other people, when Jesus was looking at the motivation of this woman, the sincere communication of her appreciation, someone else was looking at the cost implication and the wastage. Are we together? But he never said you wasted this. He tried to angle it in a way that should look like he was concerned about the treasury of the house. Are we together? And this is what he said. Verse 5, please. Let's go back to verse 5. Why was not this ointment sold? So for him, you can still worship Jesus another way. Go and sell it. Bring the money. Let's add to the treasury. But his motive was so that he would have more money to be stealing. Are we together? It was never about Jesus. It was never about his desire to see his master exalted. Are we together now? Judas had no business. Listen, although he was a sincere person, he wanted to use Jesus. The moment he came and found out that there was a flourishing ministry, he looked at it carefully and saw the financial potentials that were in that ministry and he strategically positioned himself 
being elected the treasurer, he found out that he could keep motivating people and the more they brought money to the ministry, he would help himself. So you would see Judas at every crusade. You would see Judas attending to the poor, collecting all the seeds to Jesus. You would look from that experience and say, what a zealous man. The first to appear in every crusade ground. The one to respond to the necessity of Jesus. But the motive behind it was his belly. Are we together? The next verse, verse 6. This he said, not that he what? Cared for the poor. The Bible says, but because he was a... That was his mo the motive. He was looking for more money so he could steal. So he angled it in a way that made it look like he was having an appetite for God. The Bible says, and he had the back and bear what was put therein. In other words, if they changed Judas from being a treasurer to an ordinary disciple and made Thomas or Peter the new treasurer, all of a sudden, he would not care about any sacrifice again. Are we together? This is an example of the motive and the motivation behind so many people. You would see them pray for the anointing as if they really love sick people. You would see them pray for prosperity as though they really, really want to help and bless people. You would see them fast as they, they pray for crowds and you would think they are really compassionate. You would think they care so much about the people coming. But at the heart of their pursuit is this self-centered, demonic, and many times satanic motivation. Are we together now? How many men of God use the anointing, use members, use so many people to boost their ego. And when they go around, you see pastors gather to talk. And you'll be amazed at the content of their discussion. Have you seen my members? Have you seen the jeep that this one bought for me? There are 20 oil company workers in my church. There are senators in my church. There are this and that and that. I mean, we grew from 5,000 to 20,000 in one year. Great news. But then, what is the motivation behind it? And so we use those things to scorn others. We use those things to command honor. When pastors come together, the ones who seem to be having results or desirous of results seem to push others and sit in a position of honor that is not given by God. Motive. Motivation. Judas was doing what physically would have been a wise suggestion. I can understand his passion because he was in the finance department. Are we together? And so from financially speaking, it would have been a still a worthy way of worship to sell it and bring the money and then the money be given to the poor. But the problem was the motivation behind that statement. Not necessarily what he said. The motivation behind it was wrong. Brothers and sisters, you can fast all you can. You can pray all you can. You can carry bottles of anointing oil, carry handkerchiefs and mantles, go and fly on the man of God's bed and roll there from night till morning. When this adjustment of the state of your heart is not in place, forget about God doing business with you, especially in this end time. Are we together? Proverbs chapter 16 verse 2. Solomon, who was a wise man, said something that is very interesting. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 2 is projected. He said, all the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weighed the spirit. Can we have any other version? Just any other available one that renders something differently. The Lord tests the motives. He judges the content, the motivation. It says all the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes. But the Lord weighs the spirit, the thoughts and the intents of the heart. In other words, if I get up right now and 
I tell this lady to stand up and I lay hands on her and she falls under the anointing while you are clapping and say, man, this guy is anointed. God is not impressed with that experience until he scans the motive behind it. If the motive behind it was to prove a point to a few people that the anointing is still alive, that experience has been corrupted as far as God's standard is concerned. Are we together? You can raise 10 people from wheelchair and in heaven you raise only one. From the second to the last, the motive cancelled it by zero. Are we together now? Look, when you understand this, you will focus more on motive than physical experiences. Because it's difficult for men to discern because men judge by the outward appearance. How many pastors frustrate themselves? How many people frustrate themselves? They think they want power. They think they want grace. But God has already seen the true content of their hearts. You will think when they are anointed, they will spend their lives serving God. You will think when they are anointed, they spend their lives. Listen, I go for meetings and thank God for the honor here and there different people have their ways of responding and while i step into the meetings to sit down i see all kinds of admiration you see a lot of young people bouncing on the floor happy and just wishing and say oh god give me what you have given this person and i can sense in my spirit the field of their motives they want to be celebrities and since they cannot run like you saying bolt since they cannot play tennis like the Williams, they feel ministry is a cheaper route to achieve the same thing. And God says, no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Anna wanted a child. I've taught us. She wanted a child so desperately, but her motive was to prove to Penina that she also had a womb. And she kept going to Shiloh to pray and God never had it. Listen. This is very scary. A woman who wanted to prove, she went to the house of God and cried. And God said, it's not enough reason for you to have a child. Until she gave up and said, Lord, this is not about Penina again. I align my will to you. She prayed once and a child came. Once. 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 So many people one crowd they want power they want revelation 80 percent of the text messages that people send to me what is the secret of your anointing what is the secret of your grace what is this thing in these teachings that transform people let me tell you it's beyond prayer it's beyond fasting the motif of your heart is greater is the foundation upon which any true spiritual experience is accepted before God. this already is a deliverance for somebody hearing me because it's, it's a call for you to find out you have been engaging sincerely in many spiritual attempts but you may never find the power of god until your motive the state of your heart is arrived. The sincerity and the love that you have for God and his people. The sincerity and the love that you have. How sincere is your motive? As far as God is concerned and the sheep of his pasture. The Bible says a good shepherd lays down his life. He does not stand on the sheep so that they will see him. A good shepherd is not one who prays in tongues a good shepherd is not just one who walks in miracles a good shepherd lays down his life constrains himself inconveniences himself for the success the progress how many pastors do that how many pastors rejoice that god is lifting people how many pastors rejoice you see when you understand this you will at once listen at once i remember one time i think i was I, I, I don't know where exactly and we're sitting down and one pastor i was talking with a group of pastors and then somebody passed and then they tapped in and said that's that's apostle 
the apostle Joshua Selman you've been hearing about that's him and he came around and sat down in less than 10 minutes this man was telling me oh he bought his suit so 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 amount God has been faithful in the ministry they've been seeing all kinds of explosion and later I asked the other person I said sorry what is the membership strength of this church we're talking about here and it was not even up to 35 are we together now so you see that this person came and was talking like this in hope to get honor and respect because he has been taught that when you try to create that picture and you package yourself and make it look like look i'm an overseer i'm not just a pastor i need you to know that i'm overseeing something you need to realize that there are people under me there are pastors around you say oh really we see what god is doing please let me advise you get out of those wrong and devilish associations i'm telling you this you may be criticized but it's better to be criticized than do business with god you never find me in a company of all this rubbish by the grace of god no i never look down on any man whether you are pastoring one church or two churches and i never give you any unnecessary honor whether you are pastoring one million people are we together now There are certain people here, if God will give you one-tenth of the anointing you are crying for, God will have to summon prayer warriors to pray for your salvation, not even the church again, just to make sure that your salvation is protected. Are we together? So many people. We have seen many people let's use the music industry for instance we have seen people who when they started they they ran around pastors pray for me give me anointing give me this and that and the moment god lifts them a little they change in a way that you will not imagine are we together now and you find out that their motivation is no longer the passion for god it is where honorarium will come where the paycheck is fattest is where the holy spirit is directing them are we together so if they give you administration in one small youth fellowship or where there are 30 zealous youths genuinely hungry for god and they give you another invitation in victoria island where you are flying business class are we together now and a range rover sports is what is receiving you from the airport to the hotel and you sit down and calculate you say i've suffered in this life even god knows i've suffered in this life then you take all kinds of selfies and snapshots of yourself and send it and write on that god is faithful god is faithful yes but the motive behind that statement is corrupt what you are really saying is watch my life and be intimidated you are not saying you are just using a christian term are we together motif I watch with pain in my heart because I know that God is still looking for men and women there is no man of God that can bring the revival we are talking about single handedly the best of any man is an effective member God is looking for an army not a person if it looks like there is only one person it's because many people are not ready it's not because God is mising his grace I tell you this so many people praying and crying use me oh god let me change my territory use me as an agent of revival all kinds of people trying to play all kinds of gimmicks to see the power of god come but when he searches their hearts he sees that their motives are not right how many ladies want to marry men of god you would think it's because they are they care about the burden of the vineyard you would think they love the man and say oh god let me live my life ministering to this man the way they talk you'll be motivated you say you can imagine her passion have you eaten sir have you really eaten are you okay 
huh? you have been losing weight these days are you okay but the truth of it is it's not any passion for any sheep is that the last time they checked their television and saw how mama looked mama of whichever ministry it was admirable people will come and kneel down before you and say mommy just speak a word and drop a check and they say if this is what mama represents i'm, I'm up for it i mean i i take it with all gladness and gratitude so it makes the sister to always establish her presence in the prayer meeting when there is bible study the sister is there are we together when there is any fasting program she's there she comes fasting but holds cooler for the pastor now there's nothing wrong with cooler ministry it's very useful uh come on very very useful are we together so that i don't make ladies punish a lot of pastors from do what god has asked you to do to the man of god Are we together? When food finished for Elijah, when Elijah's food finished and water dried, God sent him immediately to a woman to take care of him. So that ministry is very biblical. Are we together? Motivation. How many people in church are looking for ordination and PA? So, and they are the first to come and greet the pastor in the morning pastor how are you I want to tell you what is happening in this church it's like you have been very busy but I've been covering for you I can, I can tell you exactly what has been happening the last time you went there is a stubborn lady in the worship team I don't know exactly it's not happening here I can tell you at least not, not to this level praise the Lord so I can give this example generally speaking and then once you talk you now say pastor uh, there's a message that I prepared anytime you are not free you are busy I can always stand in for you at the conference or the crusade you will look at this guy and believe that he's very zealous the pastor will say I really have someone covering my back but it's because this person went and met his uncle and the uncle said the job is not coming and he sat down and calculated and said which one is the fastest route to establishment masters phd i can start up a business it will take five years before it will be established but if i partner with this man i'm sure that in six months god will wipe my tears so he comes and you will find unusual passion are we together motive whenever you see a man who is very close to the anointing and never receives it his motive stopped him from receiving that's what happened to Gehazi by the grace of God when you see the heads of departments of this ministry and many people and other people who are connected to this ministry when you look at the life of those who are connected in reality you even those who have never seen my face you will see a reproduction of grace I have met people in meetings I sat down and I thought I was hearing myself I was like my goodness who is this guy but there are others who are around the anointing around but their motive oh look let me tell you something about God he is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents hallelujah Elisha worked with Elijah for a very long time he would have been I mean um, um, Gehazi he would have been prophet Gehazi but you can see his motive one time Naaman came and when Naaman was healed Elisha told him to just go and carry all his goodies and go and Naaman like Judas you see it now Naaman said we can't let this thing just go like that and he ran after him and said wait my master just changed his mind can you offload some of these things i will handle it and when he came back he just kept quiet like nothing happened and elisha looked at him and said was my spirit not with you sometimes members in church are really foolish if a man is really anointed and he can stand on stage and see what is happening in the lives of people what makes you believe he cannot discern your motive are we together when i talk to pastors and i counsel them and they bring me 
problems maybe them assistants um, other people around are fighting I look at them and I say come on now are you not anointed where did you keep the anointing do you drop it just at the altar can you not discern everyone say motif say it again motif your motif and your motivation sincerity is what is lacking in the body of Christ sincerity sincerity of motif is the reason why we have not seen the power of God in our lives sincerity of motif our motifs are perverted our motifs are corrupted I once met a pastor who told me he had met Benny Hinn one on one when he told me he had met Benny Hinn one on one I looked at his life and tears wanted to come out of my eyes he thought it was a testimony I said I can't understand what are you saying he said truly he was in a program he happened to be like a PA or some not PA but you know those who and see please if you are close to a man of God go back and start examining because proximity is not equal to connectivity you can be the closer you are to a man of God the farther away your chances of truly receiving the anointing because familiarity can step in are we together now Beauty. I never get too familiar with the Holy Spirit I love him the Holy Spirit has revealed himself in uncommon dimensions to me but at every point I make sure that that sense of honor that my motif is always a right when I'm praying for a meeting oh Lord I thank you for your power and your glory in this meeting he sees my heart and he knows that I'm not trying to look for a name I'm not trying to look for fame. Are we together? When was the last time? Listen, and I'm talking to all of us, especially for those who are pastors. When was the last time your motif was aright? You see why David was called a man after God's heart? David would say, search my heart. Not search my throne. Search my heart. Try my thoughts. Because my heart can be deceitful. So many people have missed out on the will of God. That's the reason why you find out that in many churches, after a while, people start fighting for the position that is most lucrative. When you call somebody and say, promise, go and work in welfare. Ken, work in prayer department. Mama, work in ushery. Mama says, ushery. It's me now that you are giving ushery. This guy is in prayer department. At least the honorarium, there's a possibility of honorarium coming. Welfare, there's no possibility of any honorarium coming. Are we together? Have you seen people lobby for positions in church? You've seen that happen? This is the reason. They find, you know how a funnel is. When you pour water, the funnel moves in a direction. And so they discern where the money or the honor is flowing. And they leech themselves around that place. And God sees their hearts. Says your motif is corrupted. I like you to in a very sincere way. Listen. Cry out and ask the Lord to search your motif for desiring his presence. For desiring the anointing for desiring crowd for desiring revelation for desiring fame you want miracle power is up for grabs but the question is what is your motivation are we together very important come and make 
my heart your home come and be everything i am and all i know search me through and through till my heart becomes a home for you come and make my heart your home come and be everything i am and all i know me through and through till my heart becomes when was the last time you listened to a man of God his prayer content and you had him praying and crying for the sheep oh God bless these people oh God increase them if it means that you don't lift me and you lift them, go ahead, oh God. Sincere motive. Sincere desire. Oh God, I'm a shepherd. They can die, but let me live. That's the prayer of many people. That's the attitude of many people. I pray for you. May God touch your motive and bring you to a point where you are very sincere. Many people watch Johnson Suleiman and watch all the prophets who move in very uncommon levels of the revelatory dimensions of prophecy. And you see the desire. You see the desire. You, I mean, you see the hunger. Every time they say a man of God is coming to town, you see so many people, they go and sit in front. You would think they want the anointing for a clean motive. sincerity that's what i shared with the pastors i told them many of you are not sincere it shows it shows in your discussions it shows in your your secret lives that you really do not love the sheep it shows that you don't care about them every time i come in for koinonia and i see crowds of people and i see people standing if I see just one person standing, I can feel it in my heart. Sometimes I'm almost quarreling the protocol department and they say, look, we are doing our best. There is only so much we can do. I, I feel as though I should stand and let the people, I, I just would not interrupt the work of the various departments, but I see it. Especially when we are done and I see people leaving and where we are going and I see some people trekking in groups happily through the night my heart is moved listen compassion is a big key to walking in the anointing compassion is the ability to be touched with the feelings of people it's the secret to the anointing are we together if Sam is sick right now and I come to Sam and I lay hands on Sam and Sam is not healed. I lay hands on Sam and Sam is not healed. I will carry Sam by myself to Shika because I am so interested in his healing my ego notwithstanding. But a pastor who is more concerned about his ego would rather leave Sam to die. Are we together? So that it will be through his hand. How many pastors have quarreled members for receiving miracles in other places aside from their church? Are we together? How many people will dare not give a testimony about what God used another man of God to do in their life before the overseer? He says, so you are trying to say I'm not anointed. Now, honor your man of God. Respect him. Don't come and cause trouble between pastors. But at the same time, any man who is desperate for change in people will celebrate that change even if it does not come through him because the most important thing is that the people have received many of the testimonies we give in our churches 
were not carried out by the hands of many of the pastors. That's the truth about it. But it's just that the people know if they testify and say the whole truth, the pastor will note. In fact, it's not even the pastor. There is already a system to punish disloyalty. Are we together? Motive. Motive. And some of us in our little groups and fellowships is already happening to us right now. The moment somebody comes and says, wow, God bless me with this revelation and it did not come from you. All of a sudden you start looking and say, oh, I wish sure is correct. Let me see it. Motive. If what you want is celebration and being a celebrity, if that is your prime, if you just want celebrity, please go and act for him if you want the anointing if you want to serve God genuinely your heart must first be to him and to the sheep of his pasture I worship you great I am you are mighty in this place I worship you, King of Kings. You are the strong and breasted one. I lift my hands in worship as I see praises to your name. I lift my hands. As I see praises to your name. Listen. You must love God and align your motive. I say it again. Align your motive for desiring the gifts of the Spirit. Align your motive for desiring power. You want access to revelation. Align your motive. align your motive motive is the core behind the dispensing of graces unto people what is the state of your heart I know you are well meaning but what is the state of your heart sister it's not like God cannot give you a great man of God to marry but what is the motive behind your heart? If the motive of your heart is to serve God and to stand by that man to be a blessing, to partner with him, to lift up the banner of Christ in the nations, I guarantee you God will not withhold it from you. But if your motivation is that you just sit down and just smile around and look like you are more than other ladies and so Ankara and all of this you will never let me just tell you you don't even have to pray about it I'll help you answer the prayer now it will never happen that way because God is not a fool I want you to know that kingdom advancement is a serious business to God he gave the blood of his very son for it and so anyone playing games with the anointing closely related to this I want to share with all of us a big secret before we go to point two. I began to pray recently and I was asking the Lord why many miracles that happen to people in the body of Christ don't last and the Lord showed me something that scared me I want to share with you this everybody say money shout it say mammon the Lord taught me a mystery that I want all of us. Please open your eyes and let me teach you something. Watch this. If I'm holding money, so I have your attention now. Come, sir. Watch this. If Michael is sick or in need of breakthrough or he's trusting God to wipe his tears in any area, are we together now? And then he comes to meet me as a man of God. And I tell him, Michael, give me 1,000 naira and I will pray for you. 
and I will sow a seed. I guarantee you in the name of the Lord Jesus, you just cancel that spiritual transaction. Anointing will never, has never been an instrument in exchange for money. Are we together now? I can bless him. Listen, let me tell you why many people, especially many young pastors and young prophets, are fraud. Their, their lives look like they are fake. Some of them are not fake. The truth is that they are violating this law because you never buy the power of God. No, sir. Is God speaking to us? I can bless him and he decides to sow a seed into my life. He can use the money and buy a tape or buy a book. A pastor can challenge people in the church to sow seeds for a project. That's all right. But where the money is in direct demand so that you will supply anointing is called witchcraft. If you are doing it here, stop it now. Let me tell you. Now, stop it. Not later. Now, stop it between you and God. Let it never happen. You will never see the power of God that way. Remember in the book of Acts, the gentleman who wanted to buy power from Peter and he said, your money perish with you. Pastors have reduced themselves and reduced the potency of the anointing of the spirit. I know we need money. Ministries need money. Don't get me wrong. I know. I know that pastors need money. They have families. But not to compromise with the anointing. The anointing will bring you money. Big time. People will surprise you. But it's not going to be this way. Are we together? All those things where you carry offering basket and as I heal you, you drop your own. Whether you call it free will or whatever, if it came in demand for the anointing, brothers and sisters, if you ever saw result, it was the mercy of God, not a justification of what happened. This is one thing that I've seen that is eating people in the church. You do not use the anointing for merchandise. No. You will be blessed. You will be changed. Look, let me tell you. Bless people and allow them to decide to honor you. They will surprise you. How much can I charge you for a breakthrough? How much can I charge you for miracles? Let's assume that you receive a breakthrough and then you, I ask you to pay me 10,000, 20,000. Let's even assume that I ask you to pay me 50,000 and you bring it. I have received wages, not favor, wages. But by the time I bless you and I leave you to the God that sent me, he himself will move you and you will come with one million naira, 10 times what I would have demanded and you will bless me it's impossible to be a true servant of god and bless people without god moving them to bless you it's no it never happens if nobody is blessing you it's because your anointing is not notable enough are we together this is one of the reasons why many people are rushing into ministry because it seems like he's working. Someone gets into ministry and in four months, he has 10 jeeps. He raised offering for himself and 10 people gave, and there are rich people. You see, people are desperate. So whatever, I said, I beg, please take the jeep and heal me. I'm tired of all this trouble. But God is watching. And you find out that they rise and never get to certain levels. And God says, I can't take you international with this attitude. You will misrepresent me. Your motif is corrupted there have been times when people have sown seeds in this ministry especially seeds of kinds and when they bring it because I never use them but I just bless them and we release it sometimes we give it to people sometimes we honor the workers with it I look at it when I see maybe especially gadgets or some things and I find out that it's very expensive 
and we get to find out that the owner most probably is a student or whatever and even moved and I say ah this is a student probably the parents bought this for him we appreciate the sincerity but I have not once not twice I've asked the protocol department look for the owner of this and bring and I pray for the person bless the person and give the person the gift back for many of us your hand is in a mode to collect consistently it doesn't matter how it comes no that's not the way God blesses people in the kingdom is God helping us to examine motives motives how many pastors have trouble rich men in their church visitations every day you would think the visitation is because of brotherly love what sort of brotherly love you pass 12 members who are your members but because you know that you will take kunu or zobo or or maybe um whatever it is they just find something or cold water that is not honoring enough and then you go and keep inconveniencing some other people and tell them look uh i came with a word this word is very strategic let me see a seed i, I need a seed to, to provoke the anointing the anointing is provoked yes but it's provoked out of revelation, not demand. Are we together now? It is true that you can bring a seed to a man of God. When Isaac was going to bless his sons, he said, make me venison. This was talking to, it was a fatherly blessing. It's not just that he was saying, come and buy my anointing with venison. He was saying, honor me with it. I've taught you the law of honor. But this thing of demanding money for power, anytime, listen, it's not even every giving that is worth collecting. When you discern that that giving is like selling your birthright, you honorably decline. There are people who give you in such a way that the day you, as you collect it, you throw away your honor. Preserve the, how much is 10 naira, how much is 20 naira, tea and bread, and you lose everything because of it. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Don't get into that attitude of wanting to buy anointing i hate the way we talk about money all the time in church it, it can, i mean have you seen men of god who preach a very solid message solid message and when the spirit of the people are lifted it, it just now coins they say in conclusion there's a story and uh, immediately the people start getting uncomfortable because they know where he's going to. Say, I can't end this, this meeting without you hearing this story. Because this story would demand a, a response. There was a man. And then so on and so forth. And they tell you all the story. And at the end of it, the man now says, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all of that. And um, you, I'm going to bless you stand here with 5,000. Not if God is leading you or if you are led to sow 10,000. You, you are a rich man. You can't bring 5,000 for me. Stand here with 10,000. And the moment you start doing that, you may not be fake, but you are driving the, the, the fire of God from your life. And if you don't take time, it will become Ichabod, the departure of the glory. That's why certain men of God, eventually you find out that the grace of God just diminishes in their life. You would think they did not visit the Baba they used to visit. It's not Baba anything. It's just scriptural principles that they have violated. Say in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to be sincere and to be true. I open up my heart and I ask the Spirit of the Lord to examine my motive. How many people pray for hours because they are trying to intimidate others? They are tired though, but because they saw another colleague, they fire on. On a very good day, they would have rested if the person is not there. I've seen people who pray and they are sleeping. Once they hear the door, they just stop. To mean you should come and see me. In the... Look, 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 look. Don't play games with the anointing. You must be true if you want the power of God. Number two. Shiba 
you want to carry the glory of God upon your life, your level of passion and hunger for God, your level of passion and hunger, There's a song in my spirit. She's your mentor now. Come and sing it if you know. Spirit, lead me where my truth. Let me walk upon the waters. You know the song? That's the song that is in my spirit. Sing it to him. In the presence of my Savior, Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you will come. Sing it one more time with all your heart. Where my trust for you is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters. Your level of passion and hunger. Brothers and sisters, seeking God is a full-time pursuit. There's nothing like part-time seeking God. Are we together? No, you don't seek God part-time. You don't seek God with your spare time, sorry. You don't seek God with the remaining time you have. After you make money, after you marry, after you give birth to children, the balance of it, you now say, oh yeah, God, take. No, no, no. The jealousy of God fights anything that is above him. Even if it's what he gave you, he will still fight it. Listen, God can give you a thing that he will still fight it tomorrow. The moment it rises above him, his jealousy begins to fight it immediately. When the Bible says God is a jealous God, take that word very seriously. your passion psalm 42 verse 2 listen pursuit is the proof of passion pursuit is the proof of passion every time you have passion towards anything you will seek it and pursue it unsupervised unsupervised do you know why the christianity of many believers is cold and lukewarm let me tell you the truth they do not have passion for God. My soul thirsted for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? This is the psalmist. A psalm communicating passion. Are we together? If this is my wife, if this is my wife, watch this and i travel for two days if i'm not a foolish and a stupid man what should happen to me while i'm away if i really love her and i'm passionate i should miss her Abby. when i'm about coming what should happen when i see her will i just pass and say how are you i'm back you know there's something wrong immediately are we together when relationship and fellowship is in place I should run and give her a big hug and say, sweetheart, I missed you. How are you? Just me. What has happened? Passion. If a call is coming, I ignore the call because I'm trying to communicate passion. If you must be prompted to love God and to seek God, it's because you are not passionate enough. Anything you are passionate about, you have time for it. 
my brother that's why this night after koinonia as late as it is you are still going to escort the lady to her room the reason is because you have passion are we together there are brothers after koinonia right now they will even enter boss there is a fire they themselves cannot explain they say let's go what is boss is it will kill the time we have for our discussion and the lady stands brothers and sisters from here to north gate will look like five minutes and they say we're even here that's passion but let let me tell you to escort somebody you don't have any, a man let me ask you to escort your colleague by the time you get to that shop you say are you biking or we are walking because you love the person jesus brotherly love but there is no passion that fire is not there have you seen a lady 12 30 the guy is shaking and he says let me try flashing her he flashes once and she pity he say i'm sorry let me start by apologizing he say for what he say I, you, you sound sleepy he say i was just stretching but the truth is she was sleeping everybody say passion say fire that's the name of that experience if you don't have that thing listen listen if as you are sitting down right now this is not your feeling for god you need a retreat i'm telling you the truth it's a sign don't wait until you see any demon or anybody chasing you in a dream you need a retreat very quickly fire that's what it takes there must be an obsession that's the word really if you are not yet obsessed about god forget about his power in your life it must be an obsession and by the way let me digress to help you test whether you are ready for marriage with the same feeling if you love the man and the woman in a lesser sphere careless easily replaceable attitude please seek counsel because you are about to get into trouble are we together it takes passion and fire to give excuses have you seen people who have passion for anything they give excuses watch how people act and treat football man you is about to play match 3 30 by two o'clock the person is there with singlet already arguing are we together arguing one hour before the time and then they sit down in the place of argument and they say if you did not start watching football from 1993 don't join us because you don't even know what it is. we need somebody with a historical perspective and they are arguing and the person is mentioned it's called passion the moment the match starts the person is in front sweating but remaining there thirsty but remaining there are we together a point comes there are guys there are ladies who will still remove his shirt and say i'm not going out this sweat we will die here with this sweat i must watch this match it's called passion now come to the house of god and see the coldness the coldness the coldness when an average believer tries to show that I'm a little serious with God we just say pastor are we together or mama it's a shame Bless you. it's a big shame that we even resent people for being passionate about God until your love for God make someone around you uncomfortable you don't love god enough yet that someone can look at you and say Kai, talk. well carry your madness and leave my presence every champion is a fanatic of whatever he's excelling in are we together let's as fair lukewarm attitude in everything is even why people fail generally in life there is nothing in life that is worth their unflinching pursuit i'm chasing after you no matter what you know the song i will keep bringing songs that i in my spirit i don't know the song so much but if you can help me any one of you if you don't know it i'm chasing after you no matter More and more, more and more, more and more, 
more and more. More and more. It's important. To what degree do you seek him? Let me tell you something. God has become my obsession. When I say an obsession, I don't know what he has done to me. But I pray he will do it to you. Believe me. Believe me. It's an obsession. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. It's an obsession. You must get to that point. Before you want a man's anointing, you must meet the standard of his level of hunger for God. No. Anointing does not just flow carelessly. Don't you think because you are touching some? No. Bishop Oyedeko said the secret of um, the hand of God upon his life is his heart beat for God. More and more. 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 Psalm 69 verse 9 let me show you something very powerful there is a term I've seen in the Bible but I've hardly studied it hardly studied it but I studied it recently and I was amazed everyone read Psalm 69 verse 9 want to read for the zeal of thine house had eaten me up and the reproaches of them that reproach you have come upon me listen let me explain to you what this means. The zeal of the house of God has so eaten me to an extent I have become the same way they reproach God. They have transferred their resentment towards God to me because I have sought God so much I am the closest expression to him that they can see. So the anger they have for him, they have transferred it for me. That's how much I love him. hallelujah are we together it says the zeal this was a prophecy about jesus christ the zeal of thy house has consumed me the zeal of thy house that a man can be so consumed with the things of god it has nothing to do with whether you are called into the ministry or not zeal the zeal of the lord's house makes you pursue him ruggedly listen listen when was the last time you woke up in the night and you could not sleep again because you are thinking about the kingdom you are thinking about his majesty something about him now you have me and now i'm forever changed i've abandoned everything i've ever known now i surrender my life is not mine you are everything everything, everything is you everything is you you are everything you are everything, everything is you you are the first, the last, beginning and the end. In you I live and have my being. There is absolutely nothing you can do. absolutely nothing compares to you i don't know the other part but you are everything you are everything. everything is you everything is you. You, are you are everything everything is you sing it to him from your heart he is everything you are everything everything is you you are, you are everything everything is you you are everything 
everything is you. Everything is you. Until you love God more than money. Until you love him more than wife, more than husband, more than academics, more than job, more than promotion, more than children, you are not entitled to the glory of God upon your life. The zeal in John chapter 2 from verse 17, when they saw the way Jesus was walking and the way he was doing the things in the ministry and flogging people out of the temple, they remembered that the zeal of the Lord zeal is like an anointing it will drive you into places you never dreamt you will go zeal the same way you see a brother standing in the rain and rain is beating him and he says sorry why are you here say I'm waiting for I'm waiting for grace say is it compulsory it's late he say please if you will not support my agenda leave this place because the rain is not in. say what is rain am I sick it's called zeal if you do not have that for the house of God, you don't love him. If coming for koinonia does not drive you, do you know, every Friday is like a wedding day for me. I literally, as I sit down here, many of you would have noticed, I get blessed by the worship team, but I can't wait for them to finish their rendition for me to jump up and come. It's called zeal. I've been doing this for years. If I were pretending it, you would know it by now. There are times that I come directly from a meeting to Koinonia. But the passion and the fire is there. Food or no food. I pray for you that the zeal of the Lord will eat you up. That it will consume you. That it will make you passionate. So that when you get a job, you will not leave him. Are we together? So that when you marry, you will not leave him. So that when you no longer have prayer points, do you know it is possible God will solve your problem? There is no personal prayer point. What then will you do when he solved everything? The reason why many people are drawing after him, I'm telling you this sincerely, is because of the load of problems they have. If God solves all your problems, will you still seek him? If, there, if you're coming for miracle service, it's just to bring the prayer request of others. Will you still love him? I can understand why you love him because you need him for your defense next week. You need him for graduation. You are trusting he will manipulate the result in a way that you will live and be in peace. So I can understand your sin. But what happens? Listen. You always know those who never had zeal for God by their commitment after God meets their needs. Not before he meets it. After. When a lady is looking for a husband desperately, I can understand why you are around for night vigil. But what if a husband comes? And a rich one. And then, one month after your marriage, you are pregnant. Every testimony you want has been given. And to hell with God until another problem comes. Shade is here with her kids, raising them. She's been like this for many years in this ministry, way before marriage. Raising her kids. Her son is very interesting. He can mimic me almost verbatim. This boy you are saying. Take it! Or this and that, and in his own little way, but he's growing. Some of us, it took the grace of God to drag you back to the house of God. The money you got before has finished. So you came. You, you came in the name of thanksgiving, but the truth is, you are only thanking God because you are aware that in the next two weeks, whether you thank him or not, there's going to be a problem. And so you have come to the house of God. I love him whether he answers my prayer or not. I love him whether he ever anoints me or not. Koinonia is too small a reason for me to love God. The results in my life are too small a reason. Fall in love with him to that extent. I keep falling in love with you. I keep falling in love with you. I keep falling in love with you. Again and again, 
I keep falling in love with you. I keep falling in love with you. I keep falling in love with you again and again. I keep falling in love with you. I keep falling in love with you. I keep falling in love with you again and again. Falling in love with you. Falling in love with you Falling in love with you Again and again Psalm 63 Verse 1 and 3 Falling in love with him Fall in love with him And you will see his power in your life in remarkable ways Fall in love with him genuinely Beyond the need for things. Give me tea. Give me bread. Fall in love with him genuinely. And I'm telling you, you will see God answer your thoughts before they become prayer points. Psalm 63. Oh God, thou art my God, not our God. My God. Eli, Eli. I'm so passionate about you. When I wake up, you are my obsession. And so I seek you early. My soul thirsts for thee. My body, my flesh longs after you. Do you know lust is a corruption of passion that should have been directed towards God? Lust. Lust. What you call lust. Immorality. Lost is misdirected and corrupted passion that would have been channeled appropriately to the rightful owner. But because the person is standing where God is, so you direct that passion towards the person. It says, my flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Oh God, you are my God. I seek you early. I don't give you the remaining of my time. I don't give you the remaining of my time. When I do what I think is important in my life, then I carry the balance of the time and bribe God with it. And say, okay, Lord, please, so that I, you, don't, you save me from the guilt of feeling like I'm not seeking you. Most times when I go back after koinonia, after everyone is done and I've eaten, I go down my knees and sometimes I cannot even sleep again. I just sit down and I begin to meditate on his faithfulness. And sometimes I can just begin to play worship songs and his presence, his presence, his literal Shekinah will fill that room. Fill that room. There is a secret. There is a secret. Do you love him or do you want to use him? God does not want an affair. He wants a relationship. I've told you. God does not want an affair with you. You can have an affair with a prostitute. You can have an affair with your wife. You have a relationship with your wife. An ongoing, continual relationship. But you can meet a prostitute for one night and never see her. Not even know how her face looks like. God does not want an affair. Many of us are giving him an affair. I tell you the truth. Tonight, God is calling us to the place of power. Calling us to the place of power. Number three, the third key to carrying the glory of God. Can we just pray in one minute? I just feel that we should just, just pray in tongues just for one minute. Just to open up our spirits so that we don't trivialize this that we are praying. and I long to worship you. Oh, you alone are my heart's desire. 
desire and I long to worship. Hallelujah. I want to talk about the third point, but the Holy Spirit is stopping me. Because these points that I've said enough, God wants to do something in our midst. This thing has pleased the Lord. This thing I have taught. I know when the Lord is pleased over something. Would you just pray and just pray in the spirit? This is well pleasing to the Lord tonight. It's an incense of worship. It's a call for us to return back to that place. Would you dance with me, oh lover of my soul, to the song of all songs? Would you dance with me, oh? voices would you dance with me oh lava of my soul to the song of all songs oh he can make your ministry powerful I tell you would you dance with me Lava of my soul to the song of all songs. Would you dance with me? Yeah. One more time. Yeah. Would you dance with me? The love around my soul. Hallelujah. Listen. This is the secret of my life. I love him and I pursue him I seek him as a job I seek his presence as a full time assignment let me tell you the secret of power beyond your fasting and your prayer have a genuine motif no matter how wrong you are let your motive be true no matter what you don't know let your motive be true your motive is greater than your actions your motives are stronger than your actions. And then seek him. Seek him. You will see more miracles in your life by the act of his love. Listen. 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 If these two kids are my children, by the time I'm done, you may not have the kind of access you want to see me. Is that true? Because you are coming to Apostle Joshua Selman. But if these are my children, they have no business with apostle. All they know is father. Are we together? They can watch you join a queue and just run. You see how our children come after koinonia here. They don't come and join any line. 
they just pass you and rush to come and hug me they are coming to hug their father they have no business with whether whatever to them is not apostle to them is someone they love take away the unnecessary religion and the unnecessary formality come into that inner chamber of the spirit where only lovers come past the place where prayer warriors stop past the place where fasting giants stop past the place where word carriers stop and enter the inner chamber is a place where only lovers enter even prayer warriors don't enter that chamber even fasting giants don't enter the bible says no eye has seen no ear has heard and it does not occur in the heart of any man what god has in store for them that love him them that are obsessed listen you will be sleeping in the night and his majesty will come and wake you and open you up to mysteries while someone else is fasting god takes his prayer point and gives you as a token of his love listen in 2000 and i think was it six now or so i had a vision and when i had a vision that was the first time that I saw a manifestation of the angel that walks with me. He's called the angel of the Lord's presence. Hallelujah. I have seen three of these beings. There is one, the name is Zion's help. That's the name of the angel. The helper of Zion. These are the angels that bring breakthrough. These are the angels that bring result. I, God is my witness. I cannot remember fasting and praying to say, open my eyes give me prophetic oh i'm just madly in love with him lord i don't know what you have done to me but i'm in love with you and god says i see your obsession and he says let me test that love what is it that you cannot give me and i say lord the stage is yours carry it whatever you think in my life is standing your place take it and god says truly i see the proof of love is that there is no there is no hiding anything are we together the apex of love between a husband and wife is intimacy being naked and unashamed are we together if you do not get to that point where you can be open to god and naked and unashamed there is deceit somewhere in your relationship if i'm going out with you and i password some messages in my phone and i'm afraid of you accessing it listen Confusion is a sign that a deceiver is present. Are we together? Genuine passion. We are going to pray. God is going to visit us very briefly. But we are going to pray. To worship you I live. To worship you I live. I live to worship you. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. I live to worship you. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. What it is, it must wait. Lord, give me you. Relationship can wait. Jobs can wait. Anointing can wait. Give me you. Yeah. Give me you. Everything else can wait.
Alléluia. Alléluia. In the next five to ten minutes, there will be a very strange impartation in this place. This is why the Lord stopped me. And listen, aside from several activations that will happen, one of the major impartations that will happen in this place is the anointing to fall in love with God in strange ways. Listen, listen, many of you, what will happen to you tonight, it will become as if you have become a madman. Something will come upon you. Something will come upon you in dramatic dimensions, proportions that you have never seen. It's a dimension of love. I keep falling in love with you. I keep falling in love with you. Falling in love with you. Again and again. I keep falling in love with you. I keep falling in love with you again and again. I keep falling in love with you. I keep falling in love with you. Falling in love with you. One more time. Yeah, I keep falling in love with you. more than ministry, more than the desire for power, more than the desire for fame and greatness. Lift your hands. I tell you, something mighty will happen to you. The zeal of the Lord. 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 Ta, 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 ta. The zeal of the Lord will consume you. It will eat you up like a cancer. As I begin to sing, it will be like an impartation from my left to my right and outside is like an initiation to a realm of love and uh, I am desperate for you go ahead oh great one and bring your seal upon people and uh, yeah. I pray let a strange anointing fall upon your people at the count of three there will be mighty impartation love for God it will come heavy upon you one two three take it now take it now take it right now right now right now right now right now everywhere in this place take it right now fire is a fire and a seal for God is a fire and a seal for God a fire a passion for the house of God a passion for the things of God Just a few minutes there's an impartation happening to you your love for God must be real it must be genuine it must be genuine it must be genuine ask him to give you a baptism of love for him love for his house
pray. Lord, let there be an awakening in the hearts of your people. Cry for the zeal of the Lord to come upon you. Lord, let your zeal consume me. Let your zeal consume me. Let your zeal consume me. your hands lift your hands I hear my spirit visions and dreams visions and dreams a mantle for visions and dreams prophetic encounters that will take you to the secret place Lord right now where are those people let that mantle fall upon them visions and dreams take it now take it now take it now take it now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus visions and dreams you will hear his voice in the night visions and dreams Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm hearing my spirit, spiritual accuracy. Spiritual accuracy. Especially for people in ministry. Please lift your hands. Something mighty will happen. God is about to end confusion in lives and myths. There is a mystery of spiritual accuracy. My God, I pray right now. Like a mantle like an anointing that gives precision as many people who are supposed to walk in this wherever they are in the name of Jesus visit them right now 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 you reign you ancient Zion's king God Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are 
for you to carry a mantle that no man can deny. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's, it's all, all about, about you. you, it's all about you, Jesus. Yes, it's all about you. It's, it's all, all about, about you. you. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want those who came visiting to come out. I want to minister to them. Those who came visiting, specifically from maybe other places, pastors and all of that. I usually don't do this. I want you to stand with your heart hungry and desperate hungry and genuinely desperate to go back with an encounter. Oh, you will carry something heavy, believe me. You will carry a strange order of grace. Help them. carry something mighty that you will take back to your regions strange levels of fire and anointing deep fountains of encounters your hands towards them as I lay my hands on them. Father, let something come upon our visitors in the name of Jesus Christ. As I lay my hands on you, something mighty comes upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Take it and go with it. Take it and go with it.
this gentleman for me. Lift your hands. Not just the healing anointing but the teaching anointing. I release it upon you right now. Receive it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. A strange fire for revelation. There is one of the ladies that I ministered to here. Um, there is a strong prophetic anointing that is coming upon her. The Lord will identify her by herself just among you people standing here. The power of God will come upon that person is in, in a mighty way. It's one of the ladies here. It's a strong prophetic unction. I don't know exactly who that person is, but I will minister to you. Lord, identify the lady, whoever that lady is. Let this strong prophetic unction come upon such a one. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, there is deliverance happening to two people, two people in the congregation. I curse that devil in the name of Jesus. I see deliverance happening to two people. I curse that spirit of witchcraft in the name of Jesus Christ. I curse that spirit by the power of the Holy Spirit. I release all of you to go and do mighty things. You came all the way. You will go back like Saul went back when he encountered Samuel. Many of you will go back and step into strange levels of grace. Strange dimensions of the hand of God. All the people God has put under your care and under your watch. Go back and raise them to become mighty men. Go and reproduce the experience you see in this ministry. In your various groups and churches and fellowships. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Those who can go, can go back. Those under the anointing, you just leave them. Hallelujah. There are people here who have not given their lives to Jesus Christ. You were probably invited. You are yet to make up your mind for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've just been interrupted by the Holy Spirit. I'm seeing an angel of the Lord standing in this row. I don't know what it is about this row, but it looks like there are a few people God is touching in this row. This row, I see the Lord touching people right in this area, right down to the back i'm not not just in front here lord i don't know who you are touching but i stretch my hands and i direct the anointing to whoever should receive that touch all through this role right now in the name of jesus christ let no one oh god escape this touch of god right to the back right to the back whoever should receive that touch in the name of jesus christ lord they receive that touch supernatural touch supernatural touch supernatural touch right to the back right to the back in the name that is above all names now you are here just keep praying in tongues as you people are standing close to her don't worry about the reaction she's a very nice lady it's a demonic spirit this is god is working deliverance in her. there are people here who have not made up their minds they've not given their hearts to Jesus Christ wherever you are the greatest decision is to surrender to Jesus 
there are others who at one time have given their hearts to the Lord but the truth is things happen in your life and you went back as I sing the song my one desire is that you be praised please wherever you are those who are returning and those who are making that decision I know that there are a number of you outside please do not reject his voice in the day that you hear him he calls you for your good hallelujah right now begin to make your way to the front let's celebrate them as they come don't wait for anybody god bless you as you come god bless you as you come i'm making my ways right with jesus god bless you god bless you don't wait for anyone god bless you as you come god bless you as you come there are still people coming outside god bless you the devil is a liar he will not stop you tonight god bless you god bless you come come Koinonia keeps celebrating them. We welcome you to the kingdom. It doesn't matter how you have lived your life. It doesn't matter what you have done. Jesus calls you tonight. Jesus calls you tonight. He can give you a new beginning. He can change your life. He can give you a new beginning. You can start afresh again. Keep coming. God bless you. Celebrate them as they come. There are still people coming from outside. God bless you. God bless you. Don't let your friends stop you. Don't let anyone stop you. Hallelujah. I congratulate all of you for coming to make this decision for Jesus. Everyone at one point made this genuine decision. Realize that you are not just reciting a poem. This is a true decision. I don't care how it has been before now. I want you to know that he can give your life a new beginning. Some of you are rededicating your lives. Some of you are coming for the first time and you are saying, Lord, it's all over. I'm, I'm tired of living my life my way. Listen, let me tell you, as you pray this prayer from the depth of your heart, the power of sin will be broken over your life. Lift your right hand genuinely and passionately to the God of your salvation. Please, don't just say it because you are emotional. Let it be true. Some of you, as you are praying it, you will literally feel something leaving you. The power of sin. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it again, Lord Jesus. I love you with all my heart. And I come before you this night. With all my heart, I surrender. I accept Jesus into my heart as my personal Lord and Savior and I declare that the power of sin is broken over my life I declare in the name of Jesus that eternal life comes into my spirit from today I am saved I'm a new person in the name of Jesus now keep your hands lifted as I pray for you something will happen to you as I pray for you I break the power of sin over your life. I break every habit and every challenge from the pit of hell that attempts to destroy you. I command that devil to leave your life and never return. In the name of Jesus Christ, beginning from today is a new story for you. You keep rising from glory to glory. I, I kill away from your life any appetite for ungodliness. And I pray that you will find a new love and a new passion for God. We declare you born again. We declare you saved in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you and thank you for this noble decision. I want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands. They'll welcome you on our behalf and they'll give you some details. We'll follow you up. Thank you. God bless you.